uh, which hopefully folks, thanks for that, right? Um, so hopefully folks got the agenda, but uh, the way we're gonna manage the meeting right now is at least for this one, I'll kind of um, facilitate. So I'll walk us through the agenda. I'll call on folks, you know, when it's their time to present. And then like, as we've always, we're not gonna go crazy formal on this stuff. Just, you know, don't talk over each other. That's, that's kind of silly stuff. If we have a lot of things to say, just put your hand up or whatever so we can uh, make sure that we get to everybody. Um, we have several things on the agenda. Um, we will start, uh, Jean's gonna walk us through um, some mission statement work that Carolyn started and that she has been working on, figured with uh, kind of this new people in place, let's have that be our first order of business. Uh, then we'll get some updates from Becky right after that, just so we don't have to keep her here for uh, an extended amount of time. And then Matt, looking to you, really, I think like the main order of business for us right now is really um, making sure that we give you feedback on CPAC projects. So um, looking looking to you to walk us through what we've learned to date, what you know about the projects, uh, so we can provide you any feedback you need. Uh, we'll go over to Cherry Hill Finances. I know Ray sent out materials a while ago on that. Just fill us in yep. on how that, um, what our situation is there. I'll talk about some next steps. I know that uh, both Sanjay and Chris have expressed interest in uh, in helping understand what's happening there and how we might be able to provide guidance to Ray. Um, we'll get a pickleball update. And then just at the very end, I've got kind of meeting cadence, but it's really just, are we good with, you know, this Monday time slot? We feel like once a month is probably reasonable, but we can get to that uh, when we're done. So there's a lot on the agenda. So this, I mean, maybe a little bit of a longer call than normal. Hopefully we can still keep things moving along. But um, on that note, let's get started with minutes. So I, uh, I guess, first of all, uh, I'll, let me just say, um, Matt, are you comfortable taking minutes for us today? Okay, great. All right. So then first order of business would be to uh, to approve the minutes from the September meeting. Um, so can we get a motion on that? I can motion that. Does everyone have the minutes? Yeah. Yeah. We've all, everybody, do we have them? We're ready to vote on them? Okay, so we got a uh, Gene put motion out there. Let's get a second. Second. All right, Jeremy. All right. Any um any any comments or questions on the meetings as they were presented by Matt? All right. Then we'll just do a vote around the horn here. Um, all in favor of approving? Yeah, hand would be great just yep. so I can see him. Nice. Uh, Gene, you're good. All right, so we got unanimous for approval of those minutes. Yep. All right. Um, let's see, Ray. Are, is there anybody in the from the public here? Looks like not. Okay, so no need for public comment at this point. So, Gene, you want to get us started on some of the work you've been doing on the mission statement? Sure. Let me share my screen with you, and I could share that. I don't know if that was. Shared was the mission statement shared with everyone previously? I don't believe so. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Ray, I don't have um no. possibilities to Ray. Yeah. Can you promote Gene or you have disabled my participant screen sharing? Oh boy, <laughs> the host oh, did. If that's you, <laughs> uh, I think Ray, the panelists. And so now, now I can yes. Okay. All right. So, oops. What happened there? Sorry. Um, do you all see the Amherst Recreation Commission mission statement? Yep. Yep. So um, based on some of the other mission statements from some of the other groups, I kind of came up with this idea 
um, this wording, sent it to Carolyn's and she wordsmithed it and added a few other things. And this is what we have right now. Like, I'll just read it out and then we could kind of discuss it. See if you want to add anything, drop anything. So the Amherst Recreation Commission supports and advises the Amherst Recreation Department, formerly LSSE, in its work to provide leisure and recreational programs and events, supplemental education classes, and recreational facilities to the Amherst community. Commission members bring a diversity of interests and strengths to support the department's programs. The commission reviews proposals and makes recommendations related to CPA funding for the town's parks and recreational projects, with the goal of promoting the fitness and well-being of Amherst residents. Recreation Commission's monthly meetings are open to the public. Meeting agenda, recordings, and minutes are posted on the town's website. So short and sweet. Um, I don't know if anyone has comments, suggestions. I don't think I it think needs the, to be much longer, but go ahead. Yeah, I, th I would say I think the first sentence was sort of what we've always had, and then the ads were around bringing CPAC in. Right. Yeah, I don't think we had a mission statement, or maybe there was. I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, I think there may have been something, you know, briefer than this. I mean, this <laughs> seems to cover the charge of the commission. Um, Chris, did you want to say something? You look like you were going to say something. For me? Yeah. No. Oh no, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Not yet. A little early. Okay. <laughs> I think on so no <laughs> yeah i mean i know we've got some new folks on the board here i guess for for those like jonas and jeremy and chris does this kind of sound like what you signed up for <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it, it, it does uh it looks pretty good to me it definitely looks uh conclusive and uh comprehensive that's what i'm thinking about yeah and concise like concise like simple yeah. i thought i agree it looks yeah. great Okay. Well being of members residents, fitness and well being. I love it. <laughs> and of yeah, course, we nice disclaimer yeah, at the end, open to the public. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. getting the educational classes in there that's not just rec, it's not just, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, I, it looks good to me. I mean, if, if people are good exactly as is, you know, we can probably lock it down. But if, if, anybody would like a little bit extra time or not there's 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 no time sensitivity yeah. to this so if people wanted to you know hang on to it take a look at it over the next month and make any other recommendations we could do that but if uh if not um we would like to get this uploaded to the town's website just to make yeah. sure we've got something anybody have any concern I about looks, that? Yeah, i think it looks good because it's it's straightforward right to the point you know, it does, I don't think it needs to be much longer because a lot of people, you know, I think it's good. I like it. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems like everybody's pretty much on board. Um, so, Ray, I mean, I, may I may I ask, as a non-voting member of the commission, mm -hmm. uh, we do have a panelist and Becky Demling here uh, that served on the commission before. If if uh, uh, if it would be appropriate for the commission to just ask her in case she has any feedback on this also. By all means, yeah, Becky. What do you think? Um, I think it's good. Um, one thing I want to like making sure it stays broad. Um, having served on the commission two terms years ago, um, that it's really important that it stay loose. Like when it was Gruff Park, we did a lot of community engagement, like when we were working on that project with Kendrick, same thing. So there's always like, there's always a need for flexibility. It used to be like the North um, Common Project also had an Amherst Rec liaison from the commission. Um, and I don't, like, I guess that falls within department's programmings, but I, programs and initiatives maybe to support, like, a little broader, because um, it's not just programs, it's also initiatives that need to be supported. 
but that's my only input. Otherwise, I think it's great. Jean, can you capture that now? Where would that be? Um, where it, uh, um, uh, bring a diversity of interest and strengths to support the department's programs and initiatives. I would, as I was thinking about that too, I wonder if it makes sense to take that pair, that sentence and move it maybe to the end because you have a sentence that talks about what and then a sentence that talks about who and then another sentence that talks about what, if that makes sense. So move this one to the bottom of that paragraph? Yeah, I think like maybe, yeah, have that come after. Have those those two that are sandwiching it be next to each other. I think that sounds and, better, yeah. And then Ray, I guess the, you, you, you offered up, Becky, what do you think? Does this I, sound like what you, what we're I, doing for you? I do. I do like it, and uh, I had to restrain my own. Like, I almost wanted to make it more specific, but I agree uh, with the architects of this statement and with Becky. What with what Becky just said that I think staying general is good for the mission statement. Um, uh, uh, marking your specific authority is not essential here, so I do like this. All right. Very good. Should yeah, John. Oh, go ahead, John. CPAC, CPAC funding or is it CPA funding? It's CPA. The, the extra C is for commission. Maybe. Yeah, it's a good, good question, though. Maybe actually just put Community Preservation Act, spell that out for clarity. Act. Yep. Do we need to include formally LSSE just so people know what that is or? What do you think, Ray? People still talking about you as LSSE? I think people, people like me, yeah. <laughs> I, I do believe, I wasn't even here for LSSE and I've had some conversations where it's come up and I didn't even, it didn't even, uh, register for me that it was inaccurate at some uh, <laughs> of those conversations. It is still, uh, uh, it was pointed out by the co-chairs to me that the that the commission page on the town website still has a link that's horribly outdated. The, the commission page, I'm looking at it right now, does refer to it as formerly LSSE. And, and if we change it here in the mission, we could change it on the on the page also when we change those other it's out of date. The Recreation Commission page is definitely out of date. Other mm -hmm. than your names, which yeah. are updated, it is out of date. Who takes care of who does those updating? Update? I will submit that to town hall. Okay. So we want to leave it for now? No. Or the the formerly LSSE. Uh, the formally, yeah. I'm okay uh, with leaving it formally, Alice. Let's see. Let's do it then. Okay. The only way I would, can you get rid of formally LSSC and see if it, if it, if it uh, makes the margins neater on the paragraph? Because that's the only reason why. I would. Yeah, I know. I don't like uh, that either. <laughs> well, it'll be on the web page too, so it's going to rescale. Okay, it'll recenter. That's, so leave yeah, formally LSSC in. Leave it. All right. All right. Well, then maybe. Uh, how about this? Could we uh, just email that out to the to the commission, Ray, so we all have it? And then, how about like next week? Look to get this thing uploaded. And then, meanwhile, if anybody has any other last minute thoughts, just reach out to Ray. Motion. Ray, to, and, really, Ray and Jean, I should say. Motion to make that official. Second. All right. Let's let's say let's say Gene is first and Chris is second, just since they're the commission members for that. Yeah, I'm just so, not sharing now. All right. And uh folks approve that? All in favor? I'm, I should say yes. All right. Yeah. Yes. All right. Unanimous. Awesome. Yeah.
All right. One order of business down. Next one would be Becky. For you to give us an update, see how much more of the world you've been able to change in the last month. <laughs> There's a lot been going on in the last uh, few months. Um, the main reason I want it, actually, Ray, should I let them know about the Culture City programming? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'll start with an update on something I've been um, working on um, actually for the past month and a half. Um, we've been um, looking at using some of our ARPA outreach money to do some training around sens uh, sensory inclusiveness in our programming. Um, this would involve uh, the organization, uh, the nonprofit we've decided to go with that we're presenting to the town manager tomorrow is called Culture City. Um, they're a national nonprofit. They work with a lot of um, primarily venues, museums, libraries, um, anywhere that has a bunch of people that come in to do different things. And what they do is they provide a one hour training um, that's online, it's asynchronous so that you could have different staff people. So you take the training, they go over like a checklist of like, do you have a sensory friendly space? Um, they give you materials like headphones and fidget toys and weighted pillows and things like that. And the goal is to train your staff and adapt your facilities so that um, you can be more accommodating for those that might experience sensory overload or um, need to take a break from the activity. Um, the main focus of this initially would be our camps and our after school program. Um, just in the time I've been here, I've been to both programs and I've, I've seen kids being dysregulated, um, you know, in part because they're sensory overloaded and in part because we, don't train our staff on how to deal with it. Um, so for me, um, I'm a parent of an adult with special needs. I know like I've had two kids that did rec programming, one that it was never an option for. Um, and that's something that I would hope to change so that we can broaden how many kids in particular or adults can access our programming. Um, the cost is fairly insignificant. It's $750 um, and it's unlimited number of people that can be trained. Um, so this is something that we're hoping that we could roll out um, in early next year with the start of our winter programming. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about that? Uh, I have a couple, but anybody else wanna go first? You're good, man. Um, all right. I guess, um, so this is around sort of how we design physical spaces and physical experiences, or does this also affect like digital or online stuff that you might do? And I asked, I asked the latter also, because like, is this something that could have townwide application? Um, so to answer the first part, it's, um, making sure that when we run an event or programming that we not only have the physical things necessary to support um, that type of sensory divergence um, or at uh, like the way people there's like one in six people have a sensory integration disorder whether it's through autism or other things so part of it is having physical spaces the other part is training our staff particularly our forward facing staff, people who work with um, individuals that access our programming so that they know like how to recognize and support them in productive ways rather than reactive ways. Um, and yes, it could be something. And we have talked to the town about starting this with rec and then branching out to other departments that have a lot of forward facing staff. Um, but it would primarily start with Amherst Recreation, the events we participate in and our specific recreation programming. Staff, and then would you also have like 
coaches or you know other other folks who are helping so all right it's it's not just town employee or it's not just staff it's anybody who is in a leadership role for any of our programs yes and in order to get the certification that we're seeking you have to have a head count of how many employees you have and then you have to train at least half of them so you have to have a critical mass before you can get the certification okay all right. Very good. Any other questions on the Culture City? No, it sounds fantastic. Where are they based out of? You know? I don't know. The person I've been dealing with is in Connecticut, but that's not where their main office is. They're, they work with the N, um, NHL, NFL, and MLB and like a bunch of different museums, um, particularly science museums um, in particular. So I found out because um, the Red Sox have been looking at using them and we're um, exploring that. Um, the Bushnell in Connecticut also uses them. So they like their New England hub is based out of Connecticut, but I don't actually know where the main headquarters is. Sanjay? Thanks. Oh, go ahead, Sanjay. You're on mute. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, Becky. Thanks. Um, the With respect to the camps, right? Um, I wonder, the camps, I think, are, are largely... What's the, the, the counselors at the camps, right? These are mostly young people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I guess the question I want to ask is, what are our expectations for how much we can, what are our expectations for how much we can move the needle on counselor ability to address these situations and young people with an asynchronous online short training? And will we, well, will we will wreck for the town um, understand what those expectations are with respect to how the camps are managed, right? I mean, this is low cost, um, but I'm, I guess if I, let me, uh, let me try to phrase this precisely. If I were sending a, uh, an older teenager off to be a counselor at one of the Amherst Rec camps, and I came to understand that they were gonna receive an online asynchronous training to support children in need of support during sensory overload episodes, uh, I would be concerned that they were being put in a situation that they actually weren't prepared to deal with. Um, I really appreciate that question. Like, I agree with you. There is a limit to what you can ask um, a teenager to do, but what you can do is make them aware so that they know what it looks like. Like, yeah. oh, wait, when you see this kid start pacing, you know, you might recognize, like when you can recognize what's happening, you can intervene earlier before it escalates. We still have our behavior policies. Those aren't going away. All of those expectations we put on our campers for minimum behavior conduct. Um, what we can do is just like when you build the awareness that like, you know what, that kid might be reacting that way because it's a little loud and you offer a pair of headphones, you avoid the escalation of behavior that can result in that kid getting sent home. Um, so the expectation isn't that like, they're not, you know, teachers with master's degrees, but there are base level things that we can all do and make available that, you know, are just kind. Um, and I don't expect that it would be perfect, but I also think with modeling and like showing like different ways, if it permeates all of our training, these general, um, directions of how we work with kids, then I think we can make an impact on, you know, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to like year to year, we'll have different, like we are working on, um, with UMass at um, having one of their masters of public health students do some um, documentation and observation for us. Like, 
so we can figure out how we have to improve year over year. Um, they have to do an unpaid internship for like 200 hours of research and this could be their case study. Um, so, you know, I absolutely agree with you. It's not going to solve everything, but if we can make just that little bit of difference that allows us to become better every year at addressing um, and supporting kids with um, sensory input issues or adults with sensory input issues, like that would feel like a worthy investment. That's good. I think I would just ask maybe or add maybe to Sanjay's point is that that I think his point make sure that that's articulated to folks as they come on that this, you know, be very clear up front that this is not, you know, a medical training. Um, this is yeah. an opportunity for, for that. All right, uh, Matt, I saw you had your hand, had the hand up first. Yeah. So um, is this going to affect the staffing ratios? Like, um, or I guess I'm not sure exactly what the right way to phrase the question is. Another, uh, uh, an overnight camp that my children attended did have a program for children with special needs, which included this kind of thing, but other things also. Um, but that was sort of a separate application and they had a much higher staffing for those people and there was a different cost as well. So I don't know if you anticipate you just saying we, we're just open, these people are just going to apply like anyone else or if it's going to be a separate application, or if they apply with everyone else, do you think that you're going to have to change the staffing ratios, for example, in the after-school programs, or you don't think that's going to be a problem? Um, so what I can say is just within the programs we already have, like within our after-school and in our camps, we already have kids that are on the spectrum. We already have kids with ADHD or trauma that you know can make them respond to sensory input differently than, you know, than someone might expect. So we're not, we're not going to become a, a camp where we can accommodate a high level of kids with special needs. They're already in our programs, quite frankly. So you and, don't think it'll uh, change who's coming to the, the no. programs or the camps. It's well, just more better, of a, a okay. situation of, of um, having, handling them better or accommodating the better okay all right thanks Matt. uh jonas yes i think uh kind of dovetailing on that is if if it was a camp like i only had like one counselor managing 20 kids and then they need to kind of take a break with those 20 kids maybe uh, depending on the age of the kids could they almost have like um could the counselor say i want to know who's ready to help like be a quiet buddy to this whoever it is so, so instead of having to stop 20 kids from whatever they're doing, maybe a couple of kids have already volunteered to say, I'll go sit quietly with this, you know, whoever's having that issue. Um, and then the kind of the, obviously it depends on the age of the, if it's five-year-olds, <laughs> that probably won't work, but uh, depending on the age, but that, I guess it does bring up the question of if you're, if you only have one counselor for a lot of kids, how are you going to, how's that counselor going to handle it? Um. So we follow EEC guidelines for um, our staffing ratio, which is one to 12. Um, at least in our after school program, we always have a floater person. So we have our one to 12 ratio, and then we have a floater person that, you know, goes between because we know like frequently with your K1, unexpected toileting issues or other things like can come up. So we're not going to be changing our rotation. I love the idea of incorporating kids in it. There's a lot that the school already does around um, that empathy training of noticing what someone might need. Um, that's absolutely something that we can um, look at incorporating. Unfortunately, Culture City won't let you see the training until you've um, signed on. So we don't know. I did ask them a bunch of ped pedagogical questions around like, what's your structure? What's your expectation? It's very beginner level. It's very much about um, like early intervent, like warning signs and interventions that you can do. And then, you know, empowering the child to, you know, or the adult to have access to the materials they need. 
Um, like I said, these kids are already in our programs. Um, they don't have one-on-ones. We don't have one-on-ones at this time in any of our programs, unfortunately. Um, but a lot of this follows what our schools are already doing um, during the day. So that carry over from like, oh, this kid's wearing headphones at school, you know, to decrease noise, like, oh, wait, we have them here. So it's not such a cutoff between what you're able to access at school and what you can access in after school or other programming. Makes sense. I uh, one quick fast follow up here. So what is the like you said, we're going to go to the town to get ARPA or go to town council, I guess, to request the ARPA funding here. Is there any reason to expect that that would be tonight? I don't know whether I'm just not sure how the ARPA is sort of allocated if it is allocated amongst departments. But is there anything that um, you would need from, you know, the the. Um, this committee to help with that? So at this point, we're only accessing ARPA funds that have already been identified for Amherst Recreation Outreach. Um, okay. We were given a pot of money um, with the idea of broadening who we are able to serve in our programming. Um, we have uh, done a brief like we submitted a paper, which I can totally um, send to the commission if you'd like, um, outlining um, the what we're doing, why we're doing it, and um, how we're going to track its effectiveness. Um, above all else, I don't want this to be a token effort. I want it to be a systematic change in how we, you know, support kids in our our programming to make sure we're as inclusive as possible. Um, we spent a lot of time writing about this. Um, I don't think at this point that um, my indication from um, talking to Paul Bockelman is that he just had additional questions. Um, we submitted our paper to him last week. When I call it a paper, it's our proposal. Um, last week and he asked for some additional input, which um, Denise Leckenby, who's our aquatics coordinator, who has seen a need for this also within the swimming program um, that she runs with Amherst United, um, has been working with me on it. She has a background in public health um, and connections at UMass, which is how we're able to find a UMass person who would be able to help us track data and do a real needs assessment, like an official needs assessment, not just like a random survey. Um, so that's how we're going. But um, at this point, I don't think there's going to be a need for the commission to get involved, but I'm absolutely happy to come back and let you, give you updates on the program as it um, is progressing. Sounds great. All right. Um, and then we have another thing. There's, there's one what more that, thing. There's, there's one, one more thing. thing. I'm so sorry. That I oh, think yeah, no, I, I would like Becky Winter to. Fest. Yeah, I, I think that there, there's another thing that I think the commission can definitely help us out with and that she's going to be looking for. And I'm pretty sure that I'm leading Becky into the second piece. Yeah. Um, so Winterfest in the past has been um, a joint effort between um, Amherst Recreation and the Friends of Amherst Recreation. Um, and what I am trying to do um, is give um, Winterfest a little refresh, um, come up with some, keep the things that were worked and were attended and then um, change up some things. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, um, I'm having some struggles. If I don't have snow, what to do at Cherry Hill? Um, so if the committee had any input on that, I would very much appreciate it. Um, I'm looking at changing up the kickoff. I, I don't know if you've attended Winterfest in the past, but it used to be that there was a Cherry Hill celebration that ended the event. Um, that's kind of changed a little bit. The chamber wants to end on um, the luminaria and um, fire and ice. 
um, on the culminating event. So that's going to be February 3rd um, on the town common. Um, the kickoff is going to be um, Saturday, January 27th, um, based on the when the finale is going to be. <laughs> There is a little um, difficulty this year in that UMass doesn't come back until January 30th. Um, students don't come back. So we're a little, we have some volunteers, but, um, and we will do a call for volunteers, but I did not know if um, the commission wanted to be involved in either um, working with me on some of the events or vetting some of the events um that we have planned the main one i'm thinking about is the um kickoff event um which i'm proposing that um happens at mill river instead of cherry hill um and the reason is we can't predict when snow is going to be and I, like i said i can't think of a lot of things to do at cherry hill if there's not snow um absolutely open to any like I have nothing against Cherry Hill I just don't know what to do with the the land and space if I can't sled or ski on it so, so just not to drop a wide mill river then um so what I'm um proposing um is a couple different things um doing street hockey on the basketball courts like tournament style um because they could be cleared of snow snow or ice if need be but also if there's not any snow you can absolutely use them um i don't know if you've ever seen those fake foamy snowballs that are like squishy kids toys um i'd like to do snowball fights tournament style like dodgeball kind of thing on the tennis courts um i had the i had the snowballs tested on me so <laughs> <laughs> director uh, approved <laughs> um doing things like snowshoe races that could be just boots or snowshoes if we have um snow doing a snowball throwing contest with like distance which could be balls or actual snow i found this really cool thing which i don't have it up on my screen but doing these penguin races using, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's like using gutters and little floaty things so you can do races, um, which would be a great pavilion activity and fitting with the, the um, winter fest cold thing. So, um, and then maybe um, Mass Mammals, um, which is a program out of Amherst College. Um, who's done some other programming for us this fall, um, having them do like a nature walk along the trails and like animal habitats kind of thing. So that's what I'm thinking for the kickoff. And I'd really like the commission's input on it. Yeah, uh, so I'm surprised you asked for ideas because I think you've thought of all of them, but <laughs> let's, um, I, I know Jonas, you had your hand up a couple of times. Do you want to chime yeah. in? I'm just wondering, um, for a, a non-snow Cherry Hill option, what about like miniature golf? Oh. So if you could modify, because um, we there's Amherst golf courses right next to us, and I, I feel like it's hard to get kids to play, you know, 18 rounds of golf on a big course. But if you could modify the hole so that it was like a short, um, and that would depend on, of course, it, if it was muddy, then that wouldn't be good. Um, I agree. So it have to be like snowy and all not snowy and also like you know good grass but just an idea thank you jonas that that would be something that we can and will be looking at putting forward the greens are usually roped off in the winter time snow or no snow for the for the sake of care there we talked about that for all of our off-season work out there if it was really not snowing then it could be that that's something that's one of those, Becky and I were talking about the if parts of programming here, which programmers don't like if, but 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 if we have a couple of those ifs locked away and say, if there's snow, then we can do this. If there's snow, we might schedule, imp uh, not impromptu, but we, as we get closer, we could schedule a sledding, uh, the, the, the 
the, the sled raise at Cherry for another day during the week. Uh, if if we if we want to bring people out and try and get them in for that, have a day of sledding at Cherry Hill. If there is snow, but there's no sense that there is that we can bank on there being snow right now. All right. Um, so how about this? I know just to keep us moving, Becky's asked for some folks who might be interested. Do you want maybe Matt, do you have a question or uh, I had I did have another question. All right. So go ahead. Th those are great activities. And then is there going to be like a food component or some other thing like that? I don't know how how other things wrap into the Winterfest. Um, so fire. Go ahead, Betty. Go ahead, Becky. I was going to say um, for the main event, um, I'm looking at working with um local vendors to do like cupcakes and donuts kind of not anything that you need to get a food permit um for but like prepared foods and hot ciders kind of thing mostly to avoid avoid the inspection services um fiasco <laughs> given frame is that's yeah. going to be the 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 rec commission staff or an outside vendor um for selling food um yeah can i give you a great big tbd on that um, okay i have to i have to finalize planning the event i'm meeting with the chamber um later this week to talk to them and then um i was gonna yeah, i mean maybe some people in the chamber want to be involved that's what i'm hoping right Actually, that you jogged my memory. I had one question, and maybe embarrassed. I don't know this. Who are the friends of Amherst Rec? Friends of Amherst Rec, uh, maybe in transition to come back towards us a little bit, but that was that is the uh, the five hundred one c three that is a, a a independent fundraiser for recreation. Right now, the board includes, I believe Yusuf is still on the board, but Barb Bills is the one that that I've spoken to the most from that small group. They haven't done a ton. They, they still have a bunch of money that we can use to supplement our, our programming. Um, but that that is a, a an account that is separate from our, our budget. It's a fundraising account that's separate from our budget. Okay. All right. Yeah, maybe we can connect on that. Yeah, offline. let's. Yeah, just yeah. that. Okay. Well, um, back so to Becky's ask though about folks to vet these ideas by, uh, I guess to to keep things moving along. Let's you know anyone interested, maybe we can get a raise of hands and then, um, maybe email. easy back if you just yeah you just email folks directly. So anybody mm -hmm. would like to be um, interested? I see Jeremy's hands up. Jonas, I'm putting mine up as well. Gene. All right. Um, so those four, and you can always jump in later if you change your mind. If there's but, any... oh, you're breaking up there, Jeremy. I mean, obviously, historic winter fest was for winter, and but if there's no snow, you can always throw a frisbee. Yes, that's true. All right um okay anything else for us becky no thank you all so much i really appreciate your input thank you great work appreciate the update thank, thank you. you for being here great becky time. thank you all right all right next up would be uh cpa um matt are you uh at a point where you can walk us through the proposals have you have you heard them all and um been able to kind of interview the the, the requesters or um, applicants at this point. Right. So the situation is that we received the um, applications that had been vetted by the town about um, a week, about two weeks ago, and then uh, members of the commission uh, submitted their questions. Um, I think uh, one week ago. And then we just today received back most of the responses. 
So um, with respect to, there were, uh, let me bring up my spreadsheet. There were um, 13 proposals total and five of them are recreation. All of the recreation proposals were submitted by the town of Amherst. Um, and I'm not sure if you want me to share my screen so I can look, show you what they are, or if you want me to just des describe them. Uh, if you could share stuff, I would, I mean, I, I would appreciate the visual. And then also, okay. I, I, before you get going to, I, I do see that we've got Dave Zomick in the attendee list. I don't know what's, whether um, he was joining to be able to help uh, field questions. Is that what you were going to say, Ray? That is, uh, okay. if if the commission will indulge, I can take him off of the, uh, I can promote him to panelist for this and probably the next uh, agenda item also. Yeah, let, let's let's do that. And then uh, yeah. Matt, why don't, you, why don't you want to walk us through? Okay. Um, I, bear with me while I try to figure out how to share screen on Zoom. Um, wow. Desktop. I don't know which is which. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. I've never done this, so I have to uh, add this preference. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to have to leave the meeting and re-enter in order to do this. Okay, we while, can uh, we can while hang he does. Up. I do just I did just promote uh, Dave Zomek to a panelist, so Dave is here. Hey, Dave. Hello. Hi, Dave. Good evening, Dave, and welcome. Question is, is he here or not? I texted him. I believe that he's here. If not, then he got my okay. time. All right. Well, Matt is very thorough and uh I'm sure he can provide us great updates, even without having the um the full process run its course yet. And so oh, Matt's back. All right, we'd see here's your browser. Yeah, let me uh right, my screen. Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay, can you see that or is that too small? Um, I can see it. Any, everybody else good? Yeah, it works. All right, let's yeah, try let it. Let me go back to the start. So I can just go through them in the order that um, we've received them. So the first one, or maybe I should, before I do that, um, just, just list to you what they are. Oh, man. And can you actually, also, can you do like a 30? I'm not sure whether Jonas, Chris, and Jeremy, do you, are you guys up to speed enough with what we're asked to do for this, or would you like Matt to give an overview? A little overview here. Yeah, I was going to say a little overview would be nice. Uh, okay, so... Um, the CPA uh, Community Preservation Act is a state uh, program in Massachusetts where towns take a part of their tax revenue and then get a partial match from the state. Uh, and then there's a committee that votes, well, people apply, there's a committee to discuss it, then the town council votes on it. And um, uh, it's an annual process. Um, and the the categories are house like affordable housing, historic preservation, recreation, and open space. So, so um, right this year, um, the proposals totaled about two point four million. Um, we have close to two million available to give out, I think. Um, and the recreation proposals was one point one million of that two point four. Um, but mostly in the one of the proposals. So there were four proposals for rec, five proposals for recreation. One was additional money for the uh, Kiwanis Park pickleball courts. The second one was $60,000 for Mill River Tennis Court rehabilitation. Then $85,000 for uh, softball rehabilitation. 
seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for um to go toward the the rebuilding of the um, war memorial pool house and area and then a hundred thousand dollars to go toward trail restoration and enhancement now when i first heard about this a couple of years ago i was sort of didn't quite understand why these things go through this process but it seems that in amherst things that you might otherwise consider to be sort of maintenance um, sometimes go through this capital allocation process. So, uh, for example, the, the trail restoration enhancement is a sort of an almost annual amount that it's not in the regular budget. They get it either out of the capital budget or out of CPA or some other capital type of grant or something like that. So they don't, they don't actually have a budget line in the regular budget for materials to maintain trails which I was surprised about, but that's how Amos does it. So any does questions CPA, about that? I, I would just, I'm trying to remember, but CPA is not supposed to be used for maintenance, right? It's got to be tied to some, some well, type of enhancement. Yes, but I mean, these kind of things, they, they're, they're capital enough to be, to give you capital. So the town has said that these are okay. These conform to what is required, even though it might sound like maintenance. It's not, they, 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 I guess the difference is whether it's just baseline annual maintenance or more like long-term maintenance. So the softball rehabilitation, they're saying, this is like something we don't do every year. This is something we do every 10 or 20 years. It's a one-time over recurring, basically. May yeah. I, I, I believe that the distinction, it's my operational distinction. I don't know that it's, that it's uh, official, but anything that goes above and beyond the normal maintenance process, uh, 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 taking care of the lawn, uh, uh, upkeep on the fences, that sort of thing, anything that goes beyond a normal maintenance, we're not supposed to put anything that, that would be classified as basic upkeep into a CPA proposal, but anything that goes beyond that, anything that, that demands, uh, uh, demands funding to, 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 to substantially go beyond that, you you transcend the the sense of maintenance. So something like the the war memorial, the redoing the roof at War Memorial, which is part of what led us to the the process. If it was just rehabilitating, re, like redoing that roof, that could be called a maintenance project. If it wasn't actually, there are roofing projects that are in CPA funding. Uh huh. But and not, that's not that's what I mean. Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, if there's if it's if it's a maintenance project like a roof, uh, then the question is, can we turn that into something that that is beyond sort of something that should be handled by our operational budget? Uh, if it was just fixing the fence, if it was something along the lines of fixing the fence or or bringing in new uh, what have you, uh, if if there's something that seems like it goes beyond the normal maintenance process. Uh, that should not be covered by an operational budget, then that's where CPA comes in. So Very we're good. looking to try and shop for for the department, for the town of Amherst. We're trying to shop and take care of those, those needs that go beyond a, a basic maintenance. When you say um, softball field, what softball field are you referring to? The one at the high school? Um. Well, firstly, uh, just if you have any general questions, and then we can go through yeah. these one by one. Yeah, my, I had a quick general, Matt, which was a uh, reminder. So 2.4 is being requested, and how much did you say we have uh, available? You know, I can't remember. Off but close to that? It's pretty close to that, I think. Okay, that's a nice change. All right, um, Jonas, is it for everything or...? No, it's done. Uh, yeah. Were there okay. were there more projects submitted, and you narrowed down to the thirteen? There was there was one that was submitted that um, the town deemed was didn't didn't meet the requirements of the CPA Act. Otherwise, okay. New track. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just trying to be new track and field would not be part of that project or any of that funding. So. So the, the 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 new track and field at the high school went through the CPA, I think, two years ago. So that was partly funded by the CPA in oh. addition to other sources of funding. Okay. I'm just two years have flown by. I appreciate it. Mm. 
All right, Matt, let's hit the projects. Okay, so let me go back to the other screen. Um, oh, no, kind of press In a couple button. of minutes, I'm going to have to turn myself not off, but I'm going to have to turn to just audio because I have to be uber dead. Okay. So the uh, Kiwanis Park Pickleball Courts. So, um, and I'm Matt, I'm sorry, uh, or I guess I'm not sorry. I'm going to interrupt. Is our objective <laughs> here, is our objective to come up with recommendations tonight? Or is this just the first step in moving towards recommendations over a subsequent meeting? Um, so I think the purpose right now would be to uh, have some discussion within the Recreation Commission yeah. to, to gauge like the Recreation Commission's um, enthusiasm roughly yeah. for each of these proposals. So, okay. um, yeah. Yeah. But I, and I would and add then, to just we know. Sorry, and then you as our, and then you, you, Matt, as our representative, have the ability to convey the sense of the committee commission to the Community Preservation Act Committee, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. But we are, we would not, given the timeline for CPA, are we likely to see this topic on an agenda for a next meeting or is this our one shot? Oh, uh, to, to answer that question, I have to, I, I should have my CPA timeline more um, at hand. Perhaps Assistant I, Town Manager Dave Zomek would like to answer that question. <laughs> Well, I Hi, Dave. <laughs> Real quick, I'm, I'm going to get to Dave in one sec, but just uh, also for the committee, just remember there's more being requested than what we have. So that enthusiasm will help. Generally, what will happen is um, there will have to be some negotiation around whether we would request something at the full funding amount or a smaller amount. And I think by giving Matt our our interest, that gives him some more ability to kind of speak on, on the behalf of the commission. Uh, when those decisions have to be made, um, I, I think I think it's quite likely that the CPA um, the CPA discussions will happen before the next Recreation Commission meeting. Um, the The CPA decisions will probably happen after. Like, there's there's two phases. There's there's where that we receive presentations from the submitters. And then there's a later phase when the 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 the, C, the CPA commission discusses and votes. So the discussion and voting will probably happen after um, the rec the next recreation commission meeting. So there is some opportunity to to still give feedback at the next recreation commission meeting. I, I believe I, I I think. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Dave. Uh, would you like to uh, add to the conversation? Yeah, if I could. Um, yeah, I think Matt is right. There, uh, typically, there's at least three meetings where presentations happen in the in the four categories: recreation, conservation, affordable housing, and affordable housing and open space preservation, historic preservation. Um, oh, so um, that will take all of the month of November, probably into early December. So th there certainly is time. I mean, I think given questions that'll come up explaining the the proposals tonight I, I would suggest that you know you know I would hope you'd listen and generate more questions and send them to Ray or myself and and we'll get back to you and then maybe you take a good portion of your next meeting or if there's an opportunity maybe to schedule a special meeting to really dig into these and and help you to prioritize them uh, that would be great I guess I just wanted to put a plug in for all staff Ray uh, Amy Rusecki, Alan Snow, Nate Malloy. I mean, this is a pretty robust slate of recreation projects. That's not been the case, um, you know, uh, ten years ago when 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 the recreation was commission was considering these. So I think it's a good thing. There isn't going to be funding for everything, but even if we get partial funding on some of these, it's going to be it, it's going to take us forward. So there's 13 proposals. I think seven of them are town proposals. And they're they're really solid proposals, and and all of them are needed. It's a question of what can we afford. So uh, I guess I would I would you know, and I'm happy to help. I think Ray and I are happy to help Matt. If if you if you want to explain them, that's fine. If you want us to do it, just give me a shout. Give us a shout. 
Okay. Well, I can just briefly summarize the material in the request and then probably you would be better at answering, answering some questions when they come up. Sounds good, Matt. Okay. So for the Kiwanis, sorry, for the, sorry, um, the Kiwanis pickleball courts. Uh, so two years ago, the CPA approved funding for pickleball courts. Uh, I think it was 120,000. And uh, that whole discussion has been going on and the decision has been made to build them at Kiwanis. And I, I guess we're at the point of like getting bids and actually moving forward. But the uh, initial amount is now insufficient to complete the project. So uh, the town is coming back for an additional um, $100,000, uh, which is based on uh, $55,000 for fencing, $35,000 for the surface preparation painting, and $10,000 for the, the pickleball nets, um, and I guess the posts. Uh, so, that's a that's my summary. Any questions? I do have a question for this one, which is that all sounds like stuff that would have been part of the original. I don't, I don't remember, but that certainly seems like uh, items that would have been on the original proposal. So is this is this just construction cost overrun? Like what's what's driving this? That that question came up. In the in the questions presented to us and yeah. our response, it's basically that question verbatim, um, and it's yeah. not a matter of duplication for us. Uh, it's a matter of of more accurately presenting the numbers and also adjusting for the rising costs since that was put through before. Um, and so, in order to get an accurate read on how much it would cost here. Uh, in terms of the equipment, in terms of the in terms of the uh, costs of of the project, that that number was adjusted for the for the project at hand. Yeah, there, so the more court the work? I'm sorry, Matt. Um, I, I, was, I just I, just, I just put up on the screen gonna... the town's response. Okay. Okay. Um, and when we do have Dave and Ray here as well, so like we don't I guess need to read it. But uh, are there more courts? being requested than originally that is part of the town's response that original the they thought it would be two and this is three and then they also said that the the when they actually went out to bid the costs were higher than initially anticipated or they didn't even consider some of the costs in the initial proposal okay so if i could jump in andrew yeah so i, I think all of that is is spot on um, you know, I, I think the original proposal, I, I think everyone was was extremely well intentioned uh, with the Mill River proposal. Um, we never got to cost estimates, true cost estimates there. We actually um we we already bid out the uh the paving for the courts at um at Kiwanis, and that's already locked in at about a hundred thousand plus. So uh, we do get one additional court in this. We've already gone through the permitting at CONCOM. We're going through the design review board, the planning board, and the disability access advisory uh, committee. Um, so we're well on our way. But again, just the paving alone, the, the site preparation and the paving is about 112, 115,000. So that takes up most of the original allocation from CPAC. So we think this is a better site. There's adequate parking. There's no conflict with other uses. Um, so we think we're on a pretty good path here to get get the town three courts. Um, um, I guess that's, yeah, that's all I had to say, but i um, happy to take any other questions if there are any. One more and then I'll go to Jonas. It's just, are you gonna pave the parking? I know that's just dirt at Kiwanis right mm -hmm. now. Is that added? Yeah, no, the, uh, the bids we have do, do not get a, a paved parking lot there. Okay. That would, you know, at, at the square footage cost of paving these days, that would probably add a, I don't know, my guess is 50 to 75 grand to do that. So. That's uh, understood. All right, Jonas. And we, will, we will have like a welcome kiosk and, and, you know, places for people to exchange information and set up tournaments and things of that sort. DPW will be doing some of the work themselves. There are two large trees in the area. 
they'll be taking that down. They'll be doing some of the site prep. Uh, we saved a lot of money by doing the uh, uh, wetlands permitting in the house and the uh, conservation commission was very receptive um, to that, so. Thank you, uh, Jonas. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, going from the two courts to the three courts, is that a big expense or is it that it's all, there's so much work that needs to be done for the two courts alone that adding that third court is not a, a big uh, portion of the cost? Um, that's a good question. I, I really don't know the answer. I mean, I think there's there's simply been an escalation in construction costs in general since this was first envisioned. And, you know, no sense going back in time, but the Mill River site really was just not vetted fully, um, you know, uh, and in retrospect, probably would not have been possible. There are drainage issues there. You know, we need the parking there. Mill River is actually, you know, our best used and most highly used park in town, bar none. Um, so it was a good idea um, with, with well-intentioned folks, but it really never got to design. It was a cost estimate done, you know, with good intention, but it never got to design. We now have a, a full design for this. We already bid out. Uh, we were able to fold the bidding on this into a paving contract for 2024. So we're set to do this, you know, uh, the, if we got... CPAC money, um, uh, that money would be available on July 1st. So we'd be ready to go in July of 24 if this goes okay. forward. I, I think, um, so you never really expect three, sorry, two courts at Kiwanis. We did not. I, 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 I suspect okay. it's not going to save all that much once you, once yeah. you mobilize, you know. Yeah. Um, we've also gone through the permitting for three. Um, we're going to the, to the various permitting boards, planning board, site plan review, DAC and DRB for three. So, and frankly, the pickleball, the pickleball uh, uh, enthusiasts are saying, build more than three. Mm. You know, there's so much demand. I imagine though, I mean, just being devil's advocate, knowing that money would be cut, I think Jonas does raise a good question is, you know, if you did two, would you need this extra money? Right. I imagine some of the things, the permitting things that, that the work that's already been done, if you're going from if you're reducing the amount of pavable area, I mean, I, I imagine that it wouldn't be too difficult to to kind of transition the the permits that have already been approved. Is that am I wrong on that? Um, I, I just don't know how much savings there would be. I, I can tell you, you know, I, that number is pretty fresh in my mind. I think it was around 112, 115 for the three courts. Um, we're not gonna be able to do it for $120,000. There's no way, shape or form. So whether we need a hundred extra or 75 extra, you know, we can, we might not spend all the extra $100,000 and that goes back into the CPA kitty, but I would hate to, kind of nickel and dime this um, down to that. And I think, frankly, it's premature to do that. Um, that's what the CPA does. They wrestle with the dollars and cents. Um, in my inbox, I can tell you as of today, I don't know about any of you, but I have gotten, I'm going to say three to five pro, uh, some pickleball courts at Kiwanis supportive letters that just came in today. So there's, this is, you know, this is, the most popular sport going right now in this country for for a segment of our population. So I'd like to see if we can go for three. And if we have to cut back, we will. But I don't want to go in. I would prefer not to go into CPAC with that position if possible. Yeah, of, of course. It makes sense. Um, all right. Any other questions on pickleball? And then I guess, Matt, should we should we let Ray and Dave drive the presentations here? I don't want to I know that you're you've you've got info and have been processing it, but your call, uh, they've offered you can lead us or we can have them do it. But uh, we can move on to the to the next project. Uh, I'm happy to just give the summary. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So did the Jonas, next one. Did, wait one second, Jonas. Did you hit you had your hand up? Did you want to add something? Okay. The next one is uh, sixty thousand dollars for. Uh, Mill River Tennis Court Rehabilitation. So that goes to um, 
they're saying there's some photos in here uh, that there's uh, cracks in the tennis courts at Mill River caused by the the foundations for the net posts not being solid enough. Um, and uh, they want to dig up the net posts, put in new foundations, reinstall them net posts, and then um, repair the cracks. And uh, the, so 15,000 for the net posts, 10,000 for the crack repair, and then 35,000 for um, re the special paint on the surface of the tennis courts. All right. Uh, any... I, I, I actually have a question uh, about this. So this photo here shows the cracks all the way at the baseline. Are you confident that those cracks are caused by the the uh, the net posts or this is just a second part of the project? Matter, Dave, or I'm sorry, Ray or Dave? Ray, do you want to jump in there? I, I can't speak with expertise. Uh, well, I, I think believe... if you're going to, if you're going to, sorry, Ray, if you're going to yes. redo all of them and then you're going to resurface, you have to fix them all. Because if you don't, you're just, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah. I think the intention is to fix them all, but we can, uh, Amy Rizeki wasn't able to join us tonight from DPW, but um, we will check on this. I know the, I want to say the rehab of the basket, yeah, the basketball courts, what was that, last summer and the summer before? I think was on the order of eighty to a hundred thousand dollars. So I think this gets us a long way with all of the cracks. We would not want to do just the cracks on the right, uh, left hand side of the uh, screen and not address those cracks on the baseline. So Ray, maybe you could just ding uh, uh, Amy on that just to confirm for the commission. But we don't want to do this halfway. Is what no. I'm saying. Okay. I will do that. Okay. Any other questions about this project? No. Oh, Sanjay's got his hand up. Sanjay, I guess I, yeah, comment more than a question, but I, I, I think that um, uh, coming out of our discussion of maintenance versus capital, right? Uh, this is a situation where I think this project is really deserving. That having it's always like it's very attractive to build new facilities, right? But to keep existing facilities looking good and playing well, right, is really crucial. And it actually reflects dramatically on the town. Um, this is, these courts are right at the entrance to Mill River. A lot of people see them, even people who don't play tennis see them. Um, and people who do play tennis there, you know, experience the, the lack of quality play because of the conditions of the court, uh, courts. Um, so I believe for me, this falls outside the sort of regular maintenance, right, aspect of things. Um, and uh, I think it's really important for the town to treat its existing facilities well. Very, very important. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, how many other public tennis courts, how many other tennis courts does the town have in town? Six. Uh, we have the six at the middle school. Yeah, so these are the only town-owned ones, and then there's the tennis mm -hmm. courts at the middle school, which are owned by the middle school and then uh, usable, usable by the public when the middle school is not using them. Or the high school, right? Yeah, Those are the right. When... Okay. Good. Any other questions uh, on the tennis court project? Nope, I'm good. All right. Next okay. Map. Rehabilitation of softball facilities. So uh, this is a $85,000 request for, and it's broken down as $65,000 for regrading and rehabilitation of playing surfaces, and then $9,000 for replacement bleachers, $2,000 for field hardware, and $9,000 for Groff Park backstop repairs. So this covers the community field um, and Stanley Street and Groff Park uh, softball fields. I assume it means just the softball fields and not the uh, baseball field at community field. 
And there's some photographs um, in the proposal that sort of illustrate some of the, the, the puddling and, you know, not good grading uh, there. And then this is at Groff on the left. There is at Groff Park the old bleachers and the uh, the fencing for the backstop, which is uh, deteriorated. Um, yes. So, so I just wanted to get the scope. So that so it was all three of these fields. You just it's regrading, it's bleachers, and was it also backstops? Uh, the one... bleachers, the bleachers and backstops, I think, is just at Groff Park. Yeah, is that is that Ray Dave? Is that correct? Okay, I was going to say like, based on some of the other projects, it seems like a bargain. <laughs> Be able to take three those those three fields and re I guess the the regrading rehab of playing surfaces. So that's that's taking care of drainage. That's reseeding. I know that like they're pretty weedy over there. Uh, in addition to the various moguls and stuff that you have in the in the, the dirt, so yeah. uh, if I could, I think I think that mostly has to do with with what you were saying, Andrew, which is you know uh, 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 skinning the infields, laser leveling them, bringing in new material um, for the infields, uh, uh, the you know first baseline, third baseline, all of that being done, and you know. That can be done fairly inexpensively, um, but yeah, for some thousands of dollars. So I think Amy Rizeki, who put this together, um, got some quotes. You know, Amherst Baseball has been um, very active in this arena at uh, the field, at Community Field, as well as Mill River Park in North Amherst. So um, we've done it before. As Sanjay said, the key is once you do it, you got to maintain it because those weeds and and that water keeps falling on that uh, field and you do have to do tune-ups uh, because lips you know lips in the infield occur after a while after the the uh, playing surface uh, gets moved around by by the infielders as well as people run the bases and and the elements so but we think it's a pretty good good presentation too because it improves fields in a couple of different places in town we'll get the varsity the, the girls varsity field at community really up 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 to speed in in 2024 and um we know that the new fields at fort river will be a couple of years away and when those go down we lose fields over there as well so this is part in part to plan for some improvements while those fields go down we will get a brand new softball field out of that project but it's i, I it's probably four years away is my we guess. Spoke, I, don't know the, I don't know the timeline on that. We spoke during the Fort River conversation about uh, how this creates a perfect window for the town to look at its softball facilities outside of Fort, because when Fort goes down, Fort was the the site for a few reasons, which became kind of the the you know, the mecca of of town softball, uh, and and one of the reasons why it was is because we hadn't really invested in those other those other fields had started to fall to disrepair. There are other reasons why people would want to go to those those diamonds and play. But uh the fields, there there were problems with Kiwanis, it was too hard. There's problems with Groff, it was too uneven. There was there were problems with with the alternative fields. Uh, and this allows us to put those back in focus while Fort River is is uh, um, while the Fort River project turns Fort River into the 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 softball field that can again be the center of what we're doing. But in the meantime, that'll be a a couple years of of us trying to find a place for our services for the high school services. The town it's a it's a resource the town needs. Sounds good, Jonas. Yeah, I'm wondering about so the. The high school girls softball team doesn't have a field at the high school, correct? It's community field. So they're going to be benefiting from this. I'm just wondering. I played baseball. Oh, I don't. I don't have any kids, so I don't have a horse. Well, 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 well com 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 community field is the field that is to the south of the high school. 
So you might, it's next to the parking lot of the high school. It's not actually owned by the high school. It's owned by the town, okay. but it's, it's, does that I make sense? That. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, does the, do the boys baseball team, they're not part of this partly because we, we have no purview over. It's just a quirk of the fact that the girls don't really play softball on a high on a, on, well, in the high school. <laughs> If I could, so Community Field has the varsity, our best football field, our varsity football field, our varsity girls softball field, and our varsity baseball field. All of those fields do double duty with recreational programs and other leagues and 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 whatnot. But this would have the direct benefit of addressing, you know, uh, equal. Uh, uh, access and quality of fields uh, for young women. So Title IX is important, and that's where the the um, where the where the varsity softball team plays. And we want it to be our we want it to be our best softball field, frankly. So, pardon me for my ignorance about not knowing that that um, distinction of that. that, that yeah, no, it's a it's a weird little quirky thing. Yeah, but the baseball field has been decided. It doesn't. It's it's in good shape or good enough or it can wait. <laughs> For any kind of renovations. Sanjay and I are talking about that as well. And we have some ideas. It, 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 Amherst Baseball and, and the town and others have put in money in that in recent years, but it actually needs a little TLC. And Sanjay and I are talking about some of those ideas as well. Thanks. I, um, I had a couple of quick questions. Um, so uh, I guess what is the what is the extent of the playing surfaces is it all since none of these are enclosed by fence is it is it to like a 200 foot line is it just the infield like are you going to be reseeding the outfield regrading the outfield or just the diamond this is mostly focused on the diamonds this does okay. not go you know we may fill some holes and things like that but this is not a, a whole resurfacing that would be a much more expensive endeavor to that, actually that. strip the outfield or or and come in and, and bring in new topsoil and and all of that. So it's, it's mostly focused on infield backstops, bleachers, uh, baselines, all of that. that. That's that's that probably I think that explains my shock a little bit more. Um, and then is there any like future proofing stuff? Like I don't believe any of these would be are currently irrigated. Any plans for that? Would that be something that we'd want to? try to have rolled into this proposal as well. Um, I guess my quick answer, Andrew, ideally, ideally sure, but you know, as, as Matt said at the outset, you know, these, these recreation projects probably add up to 1.5 million. I think in our, as we look at capital plans and CPA plans and and the open space and recreation plan, which Ray and I will talk to you about at future meetings, there's no question we want to have a, a work list, a infrastructure improvement list for all the recreation areas. So many of them need irrigation, many of them need drainage. Th those projects should be on our capital planning lists. And I say capital planning broadly, meaning for DPW, for recreation, for the town in general, we should be looking at all of these uh, fields, as as Sanjay said very astutely earlier. It, you know, we need to take better care of what we have. Uh, it's all, all great to build beautiful, new, sparkly things, but we got a lot of lot of recreation space that we just need to give more TLC, and that usually means money. And so yeah. we're we're trying to knock some of those things off with these projects. Yeah, make makes sense. Uh, Matt, you had your hand up, and then Sanjay. Yeah. So in the Wesson and Sampson plan, uh, after the they have the the after the track is relocated, moving the softball field to the um, the far western corner of the high school. So, but maybe you just feel like that's too far away to we need to do this before that. I can I can address that, Andrew or Ray. So that means, yeah, agree. I'm smiling because somebody read that. I love it that somebody read our report because I was so proud of that work we did. You're absolutely right. I mean, the goal eventually is to move that varsity softball field down uh, to the west over in the corner there. 
I do, Matt, I, I think it's many, many years in the future. I think, you know, this is, if you take this one third, one third, one third, it's a very small, modest improvement that'll gain, get us, you know, many years of good play on that upper field uh, for, for varsity and other softball uses. Um, I think phase one of the larger Weston and Sampson plan is the track and field in the middle. And, and you know, we're going to have our work cut out for us to get to the finish line on that. I, I think moving the softball field might be 10 plus years down the road is my guess. When, uh, I remember that part of the, the Weston Sampson design also. And I, I, uh, I thought it was a fascinating piece. One of the parts that I remember most about that plan was moving the softball field onto the, the high school property and sort of filling that space the track leaves. Uh, but my understanding early on in the process when that came when that same question came up was that was that uh, it doesn't it doesn't remove the possibility of doing that down the line, but we can't wait. We can't we can't assume that's going to happen. We can't assume that's going to happen in a time that that is is uh, uh productive for our timeline here got it uh sanjay yeah thanks andy uh so i'll try to keep this in two parts here first of all regarding the community field softball field uh i mean it's totally critical the truth is and jonas what i'm going to say applies equally to zomek diamond the varsity baseball field and I'd be happy to fill you in offline about some of the things dave and i've been talking about there but basically, when it rains, the softball field is unplayable for day, literally days until the girls can get out there um, and uh, and play again. And Adam Feltman is the DPW employee who has sort of has charge of those fields. And on both the softball field and Zoe McDiamond, he and his gang undergo or take on Herculean efforts to get the fields playable. Uh <laughs> no softball or baseball field should require pumping to get it playable. And that is the state of both the community field softball and baseball diamonds right now. So I think it's an absolutely crucial investment. The, the ARPS softball program has seen a resurgence in interest. They were able to field a, a junior varsity team for the first time in years this past season, in addition to, or they were able to field two teams for the first time in many years. Um, and there are other and there are other programs, including our baseball programs that have made use of that field. Uh, so I, I think that's an absolutely critical investment on the part of the town. I did communicate. I did correspond with Amy about this proposal a little bit before it was submitted. Uh, I will speak honestly, Dave and Ray, that I have concerns about putting money into Groff and Kiwanis um, because I just I, I don't see how the maintenance will be performed to keep them playable for more than one season. My experience now over several years maintaining baseball fields and infield dirt is that they require they require work multiple times a week in order to keep the dirt weed free. Uh, and I mean weed free in a loose sense, not a perfectionist sense. And I, I, and I said this to Amy when I wrote back to her. I just don't know that the town has the 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 funds, the person power or the will to maintain those fields once we put thousands of dollars into regrading them. And it would it would be terrible to see CPA allocate some of its sparse funding to fields that in a year have or two years have returned to their current state. Um it's a little bit odd for me to be saying things that sound like they're opposing the rehabilitation of a bat and ball field. Um, but uh, I think what I'm really saying is that we should do this and commit to maintenance of those fields. I hear you on that, Sanjay. Uh, that, that, uh, and I know what you aren't saying. <laughs> I, I know what that comment is not saying. I will follow up with Amy and just go over mm -hmm. that concern. Um, and I, heard but if i i mean if i can i i'm just going to be a kind of as pointed as i can right if i were on the cpa and being asked to vote on this i'm the president of amherst baseball i like bats and balls <laughs> i wouldn't vote in favor of the money for groff and kiwanis without seeing from the town 
a plan for maintenance of the fields. The volume. Yeah, if I could, thanks for those comments, Sanjay. And you know, if I if I was on CPAC, I might ask for the same thing. And perhaps, you know, we just had the conversation about pickleball courts and how many courts at Kiwanis. Um, this might be an area where we decide through the CPA process that maybe we, we've bitten off more than we can chew and we should focus on the field at, uh, at community. A percentage of the proposal, 85,000, I think it was, gets us the field improvements at, um, at, uh, at com community field. Maybe, maybe that's something to think about. This is good feedback and input that Ray and I can talk with Amy about. And I share your very realistic concerns. Um, one of the, I will say, go, going back to Matt's comments about the Weston and Sampson um, report, one of the recommendations and, and takeaways from that report was that we should spend as much available funding on community field, the high school fields, and the middle school as possible, middle school fields. So um, I don't want to lose sight of that. That's what Weston and Sampson said. Those are the core of our recreational facilities. They should be they should be the best. So we should have the best varsity, you know, girls softball, boys football, baseball, soccer, and all the sports we offer at Amherst Regional. They should be the best right in that core. So I, I think that's really good feedback, Sanjay. Sanjay, you may know, um, is there a youth softball program right now? Or do we know how those other two fields are being used? Uh, yeah, do you mind, Jonas, your hand was up. Do you mind if I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there is a youth softball program. It's administered by our organization, Amherst Baseball and Hadley Amherst Softball. Uh, we have a total of about, um, I think, 85 girls playing from ages five or six through 14. Uh, we play the majority of our softball in Hadley for two reasons. Um, first, that's the sort of historical home of the organization for reasons that require a longer explanation than I'll take right now. And second, because there aren't playable softball fields in Amherst with the exception of community field, which is marginally playable a lot of the time. Um, notwithstanding my sort of Eeyore speech about <laughs> Kiwanis and uh, Groff, if those fields were rehabilitated or if one of them were rehabilitated and maintained, perhaps in partnership, with a community-based organization, um, they would be used. We have more kids wanting to play with bats and balls than we have fields to accommodate them. And uh, bat and ball fields are, they're different. Um, I don't mean to minimize the amount of maintenance that is required for a lacrosse field or a soccer field or an ultimate field or a field hockey field, but the, the maintenance requirements are different, they're more. For bat and ball fields, um, and one one can't sort of set up a field in a grassy area and call it good. Uh, so, again, despite despite my Eeyore speech, um, if one or both of the Groff and Kiwanis fields were rehabbed, and if there were a plan for maintenance, they would be used extensively. I think. All right, that's what I was. You can hear um, Jonas, and they would be, and they would be used by adult recreation, oh. by baseball, and by girls softball, right? But all three of those constituencies would make use of the fields. Can I, can I ask a question? One question. Oh, sure. Hold on, Chris. Let's get Jonas first. Yep. Sorry. Sure. So, um, thanks, Chris. Um, I have gone past Groff Park a couple times. I think a couple random times, and um, I ha have seen people playing softball there, which was very cool. So, but I'm wondering. If you really if push really came to shove on money, I don't think that backstop you could probably put off fixing a, a softball backstop because a no one's standing behind that backstop. <laughs> um, there's no spectators back there. It's softball. It's not baseball. Um, you know, why does it need to be fixed now? Um, in reality, how often is a is a softball going to go past that backstop? Um, so that seems to me one thing you could maybe push back on. And I mean, I don't, I don't know how bad it is, but um, I, I just can't imagine that's a, a big priority. Would be a softball backstop. So, 
uh, and that nine thousand dollars right now on that. Okay. Um. All right, um, Chris. I'm just trying to understand. So, uh, more about the town, even though I've lived here my whole life. The gentlemen or ladies and gentlemen that are by the pool area, those people maintain just the athletic fields. Repeat that question. <laughs> the people that the office that's by the high school, you know, where there's lawnmowers and stuff it's like that. Trees and it, grounds, yes. Yes, those are just, oh, they're trees and grounds. I'm just saying, is it feasible to give up a little less maintenance in some areas to shift maintenance to, like Sanjay said, to those areas where, you know, that field needs to be attended to twice a day? Do you, I'm just saying, don't you let some different grasses or something grow in other areas, not on a field, obviously, but unplayable areas, you know, so there can be more maintenance done on that specific area. Um, I don't, I'm not just saying that, that we have the answer tonight, but it's just, if you're going to spend the money, I mean, I think our fields right now, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, I've walked across that football field the other day and I, I think I probably sprained my ankle like four times, you know? So I'm sorry, Dave has his head up. I I don't, want to take, I, I don't want to take much time, but I, I, Chris, I think you're asking a great question. Sanjay and I, again, have had very similar conversations for a number of years. I, I think it it comes down to the town um, through the manager and, and, and his departments deciding what are the highest priorities for right. uh, uh, investing in our recreational fields and facilities. And I, I think there's a case to be made, uh, particularly when you... Uh, hearing stats like Sanjay just shared, which I did not know that there's 80 plus girls in, in that program. I, I think that's a very compelling stat. And I think you as- I'm excited about that stat as, because we, very like excited. You, somebody said earlier- the, the, you, the as, you, as, you as the rec commission, you know, that is part of your job is to advocate for and and uh, make known, you know, the needs of of families and teams and, and the community. Um, so- I think advocating for more resources and more emphasis on on our fields and facilities makes perfect sense. So that's all right. I wanted to say. And sorry, just to be clear, Dave and Chris, the 80 is for our entire programs, which is that's sort fine. of roughly evenly split between Hadley girls and Amherst girls, probably more like 60, 40 Hadley and Amherst. So I don't want to uh, no, be exaggerating the numbers, but that's, but that's what the program is. That's what the program is for a program that was probably Close to, close to being done. So that's, I'm encouraged about that, you know? All right. Um, any other questions on softball? All right. Uh, I think Enhanced War Memorial was next, Matt. Yes. So uh, the CPA approved just in the last cycle um, funding for a um, I forget the, the title, like a site plan, like a, 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 sch a schematic plan for what to do with the War Memorial Pool area. Now, they're not considering moving the actual pool, but the pool house uh, is in a bad shape and needs to be replaced. And it's also a consideration of moving around other things in that area, such as the basketball court, um, the location of the pool house, and whether to put in a splash park or playground or things like that. So the site plan is currently in process um, and they anticipate that uh, uh, at the end of the site plan, there'll, there'll be an actual, you know, at the end of the, the, that project, there'll be a, a, a recommendation as to what to do, which could then move to more detailed design and construction. And, um, the purpose of this request, which is $750,000, is to be a large part of the town's contribution to that um, capital improvement. Uh, they're also expecting to get um, maybe up to a million and a half of grants from two different um, state grant programs, Park Grant and uh, LWCF Grant. And then there might be an additional uh, partial contribution from the town uh, capital, just regular capital process. So 
that's my summary. I have a, I have a quick mixture following this. So the 750 would would include redoing the pool house and with moving the basketball court with the other funds being matched. So this would be this would essentially complete that comport that that portion of the pool project, or that I guess part of the grounds relative to the original Weston and Sampson plan. It's it's anticipated to be a large chunk of the town's contribution that toward the the, the total rehabilitation of that area. Dave. Yeah, I think Matt, excellent summary. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, certainly the Recreation Commission would would um, receive or or be part of, if you will, the planning for the area around War Memorial Pool. You know, that's a 1950s pool. That is the original pool house. The pool house really needs to come down ASAP. But we really don't want to re just redo the pool house. The, the entire area around the pool, you all have been there. Um, the playgrounds are ancient. They probably should come down tomorrow. Um, there's the War Memorial, which is on the south side of the pool, which would stay in some location there. The basketball courts that Matt uh, uh, alluded to are, again, very, very old. So what we want to do, we're going to do a site plan and, you know, that will determine where things go. What what makes sense around that pool? Does the bathhouse stay on the south side of the pool, or do we move it to the wet, uh, the east side of the pool, closest to the um, softball field, or do we move it to the north side? I don't know. None of that is determined yet. But the key here is that we think this is a you know in all likelihood this is probably a one point five to two million dollar project in the end when all said and done. And as Matt said, this would be the town's contribution. We're going to go for park grants and likely a land and water conservation fund grant from the federal government. Uh, and we would need money to match. The reason we're asking for this now is that in July of 2024, we have an opportunity to apply for those funds. If we miss this cycle in July of 24, we're talking this is a couple of years out. Because you apply in 24, the funds wouldn't even be available until 25. So if we wait until 25, we're talking 26, 27, 28. So we're trying to anticipate matching these grant funds sooner than later um, so that we can get these, um, these proposals in in the uh, early summer of 24. So that's, that's kind of the urgency. And again, you can redo a bathhouse right where it is, and that's going to cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. But we'd like to redo the whole area as part of one big package. And, yeah, and we, so, um, this is from the Weston and Sampson plan. Yeah, this, so this, this is an example. So this is an example of the kind of things that we're considering. This isn't the draft or anything like that. But a, an example is um, the, the pool would be continuing to be where it is, but the pool house is where the basketball court currently is. There's a, in this example, there's a splash area, picnic area, playground, and then new basketball courts um, where the DPW buildings are now. The other feature of this that uh, we did not mention is that the, the new pool house would also have public facing restrooms to serve the fields at community field, and the high school uh, fields so that when families come or teams come or anybody needs to use a restroom, they don't have to go into a building um, uh, like go into the high school. Currently now, a lot of people have to go into the high school, the high school has to be open, et cetera, et cetera. But there's no restroom on the north side of Mattoon Street other than the high school. So, so that's a, a key feature is we'd have obviously the bathhouse, um, but we'd also have public facing restrooms, comfort okay. station. So, so the, I, I just, I wanted to sort of get back and that's all great background. This is an excellent visual, but the seventh, the, the anticipated scope of the 750, if we were to get the matches, we think that would get us the pool house, the splash pad, relocating basketball courts, 
Uh, again, we, we, I think Matt made it clear we can't assume that basketball courts or a spray park or anything, there'd be a whole public process as to what would be there. So there, there would be recreational facilities, but there's still a planning process to go through um, to get there. So, so we already have the design money. So we're engaging that designer now and the design will in, inform the grant proposals in 24. Um, so I, I don't wanna get locked into a splash pad or, you know, we, we think those are all good ideas. I mean, it'd be wonderful to have a playground here when you're here with your family and, and maybe one, of, one person in the family is watching somebody on the, uh, on the softball diamond, but they have younger children and they wanna go down and jump in a small pla splash pad or play on the playground, that'd be wonderful or shoot a basketball. And it, that may come out in the in the conceptual or the comprehensive plan for this whole area. Keep in mind that the basketball courts in this image are where DPW currently yes. is. So that is not likely to be part of our scope. Um, I think that's really uh, aspirational. I don't think we will be able to afford a move of that that operation in the short term. I think it would mainly focus around, you know, the pool, the proposed bathhouse, the playground, splash pad, picnic area. And we've already talked about how the softball field is still in our concept, is still in this frame. Correct. Yeah, this this Western and Thampton graphic is just not accurate at all. It's just an illustration. But it, but it is, it, it illustrates possibility. Correct. All right. Any uh, any other questions, folks? Oh, Jeremy. Oh, I have to wait. I have a question. I was just going to uh, interject, kind of as passionately as Sanjay is about the baseball. But pools are a critical part of every single community in the world. If, if they exist, you got to have them. They're absolutely necessary. I I can say, Baj personally, my son met one of his best friends at War Memorial uh, six years ago when we moved to town. Pools are critical, and the idea that I, I'm I totally agree with Dave. We have to make this investment now so we can get a match. You, you can't push it 26 and 20. You're just all this time is time that families are going to just choose and select other options. And not everybody can afford to just install a pool in their home. I mean, I, it, it would be nice, but that's just not reality. So the pools are, are community centers, they're places where people come and they're places that people, you know, connect. It's part of the community. I love the idea. I understand this. This is just a theoretic rendering, but I know again, Anecdotally, I remember rolling my ankle back to Chris and rolling ankles walk across football field, rolling my ankle on that basketball court when we first moved into town, bringing my son to War Memorial. There, it's atrocious. It's it's not acceptable in our town to have to present that forward facing you know appearance of a basketball court in that condition. Um, so that was just my two cent comment. Sorry, <laughs> off my yeah. soapbox. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Gene, sorry I didn't see your hand before. That's okay. Um, yes, as far as the pool is concerned, is there any uh, planning for making a little bit more family friendly, say with a slide, a place where they could sell some kind of refreshments, you know, some eating areas? I see there's like maybe, you know, possible picnic area with the splash ground, but like that whole pool area, um, just like where I, you know, <laughs> pools were very important when I was growing up too. And when my kids were little and we lived in a different town, um, Wisconsin, it was just so family friendly oriented with with the slides and with you know different areas that I don't know rooms for the family just to make it a little bit more family friendly I guess I'm looking for is there any consideration if in the renovations in those types of areas Dave yeah no it's a great point absolutely so even in this rendering which you know a, a picture an image is worth a thousand words and this just gets you thinking, right? It really just gets you excited about what that area could be, as Jeremy was saying. You know, when we envisioned, um, when we started talking about a, a, a playground at Kendrick Park, you'd be surprised how many people thought planning staff and recreation staff and DPW staff were kind of, what do you mean a playground at Kendrick Park? What, what you know, that, that's just gonna be a problem and th this and that. And now it is a, a, a landing spot for so many families and you go there on Saturday morning or Sunday morning and and people are there. So when you see this, you really think this is such important real estate, right? It's right adjacent to the high school. It's walking distance from downtown. 
It's adjacent to all these fields. So we need to make this a show place and not a place, as Jeremy was saying, it, it's kind of frankly embarrassing when I go there and walk around the old playground equipment equipment from 1950, et cetera. So the pool, yes, we absolutely need to make the pool house uh, everything we want it to be. And that includes, you know, being uh, accessible, being, you know, kind of a friendly place to meet. You, you see in this image that they actually suggested maybe even having some outdoor pavilions within the, um, you know, for picnics and whatnot on, on the pool house side of things. And then maybe you enter the pool you know, along along that side. So I think we need to do all of those things to make these places more inviting and more exciting for families. We have invested in that pool pretty heavily, and I think we have more CPA money we haven't spent on uh, filters and pump house. So we've invested in that pool. It's it's there for the long haul, but the pool house is is a wreck and we really need to you know do that so I, I think the short answer is yes we need to if there are concessions there or if whatnot they sell some things down at mill river pool i know they try to be healthy i don't know exactly what ray and his staff sell down there but anyway it's fun to get a popsicle or whatever in the summer but you can see what this area could be we also talked about whether the spray pad could be inside the fence and maybe there's some synergy there but anyway th these are all just concepts but the short answer is yes, we need to make it more inviting. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Sanjay. Yep, thanks, Andy. Uh, getting the pool house rehabilitated is totally critical. Um, so I totally support that, right? We almost lost War Memorial as a pool, as a town rec facility a few years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, and I'm happy that we averted that disaster. So uh, I think continuing to invest in having two outdoor public pools in town is totally crucial. Um, I was a huge supporter of Kendrick Park. Thanks for bringing that up, Dave. The playground at Kendrick Park. And I've had, to my like eternal gratification, I've had a couple of friends publicly eat crow for me <laughs> who didn't believe that anyone would go to a playground at Kendrick Park. But it's busy and it's a huge success. Um, uh, I, am, I am more skeptical of this site. Uh, I think describing it as walking distance to downtown is being a little bit charitable um but you know maybe if enough is built it will become a real destination uh gene i appreciated what you said about the pool itself my understanding is that this proposal doesn't address the pool the the water holding tank itself in any way um but i suspect many of us have been to communities that we would view as similar to amherst and have seen pools with spiral water slides and lazy rivers and things like that. And I wonder whether investment in the pool facility at this site, rather than other recreational facilities might be worthwhile, but I, I'm not sure we're in a position to revisit the entire Weston and Samson job uh, during this, you know, a couple hour uh, rec commission meeting, but, uh, but I wanted to say it. So I said it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions on War Memorial? Then Matt, I think we got one more. Correct. Oops. Uh. Uh, I've messed up the Zoom there. Let's try that. Okay. So the last one is to do with a uh, hundred thousand dollars for. Um, from for trail restoration and enhancement, and the basically the money will be spent on um, let's see, materials: gravel, trap rock, wood chips and lumber, benches and kiosks, and uh, the 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 equipment required to um to install that stuff plus the permitting. So probably Dave can explain a little bit um, about the reason for this kind of request, which I think is, we've had these requests before, we have them on a regular basis and um, yes. Yeah, so if I could, I'll ju just jump in real quickly. So yeah, Matt, Matt's, Matt's right on there. Um, these are becoming more regular um, because I think staff are kind of recognizing that we need to have a regular source of, of um, 
funding to to do these kinds of projects and the projects are complex i think when we did our presentation last year we showed some some very large bridges that we're rehabbing uh, or replacing um so trail projects can fall in two categories they can fall in the recreation category and the conservation category and they kind of straddle those two in the cpa world What's important about bringing this through the um, through the lens of recreation is that, and this is all state law, not town of Amherst, but state law, if you do uh, trail projects through recreation, you can apply the funding to property not purchased with CPA funds. If you bring it through the, the lens, the channel of conservation, you can only use the funds on, pro on property that was purchased with CPA dollars. So best example, Puffer's Pond. Puffer's Pond was not purchased with CPA dollars. We acquired that long before the CPA came into existence. So you cannot, if you come through the conservation lens and say, oh, we'd like $100,000 for conservation trails at Puffer's Pond, you can't use those funds at Puffer's Pond because it wasn't acquired that way. Um, so bottom line is there's lots of, mainly this is for bridge work. A great example, if any of you use um, Amethyst Brook, a couple of years ago, probably five now, a large bridge was washed away by an ice dam at Amethyst Brook. We are desperately trying to replace that bridge. It connects the users of Amethyst Brook to points north and east. And that bridge alone is probably fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. That's um, all labor and materials. Permitting we'll do in-house, but that that could use up most of or a good portion of a of a proposal like this if funded. So um, they're not cheap, um, but they will last for years. These bridges and and uh, boardwalks. Um, we just uh, teamed up with Kestrel. They did um, um, a new boardwalk down at um, Sweet Alice Conservation Area, and they put in about 20 grand in materials. And then uh, my staff and their staff volunteer, volunteered, they, they put in the labor. And so it was probably a thirty to $35,000 new boardwalk. And um, you know we, we put in the labor and Kestrel put in the, the 15 or 20 for, for materials. So, but they're expensive. So this is a way to, to keep investing in the 80 miles of trails we have throughout Amherst that are used for running and biking, mountain biking and, and whatnot. We're also developing the trail system at Hickory Ridge and funds like this can be used at Hickory Ridge. I'm actually meeting on Wednesday with a group and I don't know much about pump tracks, but that's a form of you know mountain biking and learning how to ride uh, outdoors uh, on mountain bikes and I'm meeting with that group to talk about pump tracks. I, I believe Ray might be joining me. So yeah. we're talking about pump tracks. Yeah. Sanjay looks like he wants in. No, but I bet I know who's meeting with Dave. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a group that wants a pump track in him. So we're going to meet on Wednesday and talk about it. Last name camera? No? Maybe we, should put, it, maybe, maybe we should put it around War Memorial Pool and we could, you know, go around the pool. <laughs> All right. Um, Sanjay. Yeah. Uh, the trail network in the town of Amherst is world class, period. I mean, I get to visit places, I get visit places like Eugene, Oregon and Corvallis and Boulder and places in other countries and I come home and the trail access is always better here than it is in those places, despite the fact that they get talked about in international forums and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so thank you, Dave, and to the commission and to all the people who work on the trails and the people who have acquired land and easements and all of the things that it takes to keep this trail network as amazing it is, as it is. It is, it is world-class, there's no doubt about it. Um, so I'm strongly supportive of continuing to invest in that network. Um, I'm glad you brought up the Amethyst Brook Bridge. I can't, I can't really read everything that's on the screen right now, but is that a specific priority of this spending request? Uh, or was that just an example of something that might be accomplished? I think it's an example. I will tell you that the pressure is building on me in particular. To, we have a, we have that designed. The original design was 
these things need to be engineered. Back in the day, you used to put two telephone poles together and um, and a and a and a crib uh, structure on either <coughs> side, and away you go. And you know, and and then a big ice jam or a flood happens in this changing climate, and and hopefully the bridge might get washed away, but nobody gets hurt. These days, it's really hard in Massachusetts to build a telephone pole bridge, so you really have to engineer it. So we finally have an engineered plan. And and we're getting some cost estimates, but I I estimate it's between sixty five and a hundred thousand dollars to do it, um, with with uh, town and volunteer labor, and so it is a high priority for me, Sanjay. And in all likelihood, this some of this money would be directed toward that project. Thanks. Any other projects uh, or any other questions on uh, this project, Jonas? Yeah, so I mean, Large Hill is right in our backyard, Andrew, Gene, and I'm assuming that we're like it's mentioned here because we we get um, like wood chips from the town, I believe, and there's like a volunteer kind of grassroots. We go one one day a year, just passed actually, and I missed it, terrible. Uh, but we, one day a year, we we take the wood chips, we spread them around. It's very like grassroots. So I'm assuming that that's what this is just like a continuation of that yearly commitment to kind of keeping large hill well, um <laughs> actually if i could know that i mean that's so so we we have a very modest and and this is a challenge for dpw as well uh lots of conversations about this both the dpw and the conservation and the town budget in general they're fairly modest to, to minimal operating budgets every year ray ray deals with this so when you're talking about just doing annual maintenance at Cherry Hill, which is a recreation area, Larch Hill, or the or Kendrick Park, um, we struggle as a community to fund those annual needs. Replacing a bench, you know, something like wood chips, or or you know, just uh, replacing, you know, replacing boards on a bog bridge on a trail. That's covered. We have. I will tell you the number is about $5,000 a year. That's what I have in my annual operating budget for trails. That doesn't go very far when you're talking pressure treated lumber and hardware and all of that. So we try to supplement that. Uh, we get donations, we get grants, and then there's the CPA dollars. The CPA dollars don't play for wood chips or replacing boards in boardwalks. They really have to do uh, make a permanent um, a significant improvement. So that's why I really bring up bridges and, and extensive boardwalks. We've been doing quite a bit of work in um, Lawrence Swamp to bring some of the boardwalks, or excuse me, some of the trails out and up off of wetland areas. And so we've done some pretty nifty uh, elevated boardwalks down there. And, you know, a couple hundred yards of, of an elevated boardwalk, and there's $25,000 in in uh, materials. We're not paying any extra in labor because it's either coming from my small staff or from volunteers or a combination of both. So it's got to be pretty big. We can't use CPA dollars on just fixing things. And Ray, likewise, Ray can't use, or DPW can't use that to fix a bench. You've really got to buy a new bench and put it in, and it's a permanent uh, improvement to that little river or Groff Park or something like that. Does that make sense? I'm curious, um, what the large hill? Because it's mentioned uh, here, it's called out uh, my name. So can I? I, I don't, like an amazing, I don't see it. So, um, I guess I think the, maybe the Hitchcock Center, like uh, built the the the, the, the court the court that uh the, that that. I'm having trouble going, seeing it on the screen. Yeah, I can I can read it out for you. So in description of funding needed. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. It says. Yes. This funding is being sought to rehabilitate and enhance accessible trails at the following conservation areas, Mepis okay, Pond, Larch Hill, and Puffers Pond. I just needed the prompt. I'm sorry. I didn't see the rehabilitate accessible trails. So the trail, at, part of the trail at Larch Hill, there are two parts to Larch Hill. Larch Hill South, if you will, uh, historically had an accessible route from the parking lot of the Hitchcock Center all the way out to what they call the popcorn shack, which is that uh, place for uh, school groups and whatnot to meet. So that accessible trail needs work. So yes, we can rehab that trail since it's a permanent fixture. That would involve 
sometimes renting equipment and bringing in uh, crushed stone and TRG and hard pack to redo that trail. And also the boardwalk there is really, you, you're in a butter, you know, is it's got to be, it's 25 years old and it's showing its age. It's kind of a little bit of a roller coaster. So if we go to improve that and pull up all the old uh, uh, boardwalk, things like that, that would be eligible for CPA. But kind of annual maintenance where you're just replacing a board or two or something like that, we can't nickel and dime the CPA funds for that. I'm sorry, I missed that that piece about the ADA trails. No, thanks. thanks for that. I guess on that large though, do you would, Dave, you think you would, or maybe only could use monies to replace the existing, not install new trail where there never was trail before? Yeah, we, we, it's a good question. We, other than Hickory Ridge, we do not have new trails planned anywhere in town. Frankly, we have our hands full with the trails we have. So we're not planning any new trails at Larch Hill or well, there are existing. We, we, we might add or enhance accessible trails, um, but we don't plan any new cross country trails through woods or anything like that. Well, uh, these are existing. So I'm just, yeah. I, I, and I may be thinking, Jones, the same part of this trail, right? Where there's like a, a couple of two by fours that you sort of kind of balance on to get through. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing anything on those existing trails. This would only be about replacing something that already exists. At Larch so, Hill, yeah, we would not be making any more of Larch Hill accessible. There's no way to do that with all the wetlands laws. So we would only be, you've, you've kind of got to go to Larch Hill, if you will, and look at the, the existing boardwalk and the, the ADA trail. Um, nature has really almost reclaimed a lot of it. So mm -hmm. it almost needs to be redone fairly significantly. We need to get equipment in there. You're talking thousands of dollars of crushed stone, and so it's a it's a pretty major project. It's not a new trail, but we we can invest in the long term future of a trail like that. Um, but but again, it, it's not for expanding that trail into the woods or wetlands or fields. There, it's funny. I, I walk there a lot. Um, I don't notice other than some trees kind of um, having fallen down and maybe chipped some of the of the of the um, the wood. Um, I guess what I would worry that I don't want to turn away an investment in like my own backyard, of course. I don't want to be that's the opposite of NIMBY. Um, but I wonder like if that's going to take if it's going to take that path, that trail out for a long time, that's a consideration. Um and, and you're talking about the boardwalk next to the common school, basically, that comes behind the common school. That's that's the only major piece of infrastructure as I understand a large hill. So well, it, it includes the crushed stone path that goes to the west of that. So that's no longer ADA. It wouldn't meet any of the ADA standards any longer because it hasn't been maintained in a while. It it needs to be, be brought up to ADA standards again. Um, and, and again, we, we sometimes put in, you know, again, these are somewhat aspirational um, proposals, what everything will cost and what we can get done for the available funds sometimes don't match. So we might get two out of three projects done and the third one we might have to come back on. All right, uh, Jonas, was that you good? Okay. All right, um, any other questions on this project? I know we're going long here, but hopefully people are still managing. Um, uh, I, all right. Well, I think maybe in terms of next steps here, so we've all heard from Matt as well as Ray and Dave on what's happening here. Matt is going to be going to uh, hear kind of formal presentations and carry our voice forward. I, I'm hearing sort of support across the board, not surprisingly, support across the board for all of these projects. Um, just some of the notes I had on softball making sure there's a maintenance plan required the question of whether it makes sense to have funds towards a backstop if that if that doesn't really impact players or spectators um i guess one other so again with the idea that maybe our money um 
we're gonna have to cut something. The hundred thousand dollar, is there a specific um I think that was trail restoration, Dave and Ray. Is a hundred thousand oh the yeah, thank you. Um is there anything magic about that number or this is just you know where we'd like to start and we'll get whatever we can? I know, Dave, if you heard Sorry, my question. Is that a question for that. tonight or are these takeaway questions or are these? Uh, well, I think this is something just, you know, so we can, uh, I'd like to understand um, or give, make sure that Matt understands, like we support the areas that we support completely, the areas where we think maybe like if something had to go, you know, start here or, or somewhere else, like what's non-negotiable, what's negotiable essentially. And so I think there's some elements of the projects, which at least we're saying may be negotiable. I'm wondering on the cost piece. So the trail restoration specifically, the 100,000, that is that is that's what we hope um, we'd be able to accomplish those three trail improvements for, or is 100,000 just kind of a, a, a number that feels right to be able to, to address projects on an ongoing basis? Um, I guess the short answer is, you know, the more we have, the the more we'll get done. But, you know, in years past, when we've asked for a number like $100,000, I will say, with a smile on my face, typically the CPAC does not give us $100,000. Yeah. They will, that's one of the first items to be, quote, negotiated. And if if things are really tight with the budget, they might say, well, can you get significant things done for 65 or 75, something like that. But again, I'm very comfortable with that, but what I'm not comfortable in is, is saying, if you do that, then then what are we, what specifically are we gonna get for the money? We're going to get new bridges or we're going to get ADA trails. You know, The focus of this was a lot of rehab and, and enhancement, if you will, Re regrading and significant earthwork is more than, as I said before, more than just wood chips. So we'll get as much as we can get done. We typically don't get estimates. It's not, it's not like building a, um, it's not like building a, uh, a pickleball court at Kiwanis Park. These are simply estimates of what we think it will cost to rehab some of these trails and the materials we'll need. But we we're not getting an estimate from Taylor Davis to do it. Some of the work will be done in-house by my staff and we'll buy all the materials. If we have to contract out for equipment or something like that, we do. Very good. I all right, uh, Matt. Some flexibility in this number is what I'm okay. saying. Okay, I mean, at least this year, Matt's not looking at $8 million of projects to, to <laughs> pare down to two. So hopefully it's more manageable. But Matt, um, what's on your mind? Yeah, I had a question about the seven hundred and fifty thousand. That also seems to be sort of more like a stick in the ground that could could vary a little bit. Well, that's the matching process, so I think that's it stands out against the rest because it is below the level that we think that it's that it obviously will take to to execute. Um, that number may end up fluctuating a little bit when you start talking about those match those grant matches but uh, uh in terms of the other ones there any sort of flux that happens with them i think that you they definitely have areas where the the price is attached to pieces it's it's pieces of the of the proposal like getting rid of money you're getting rid of pieces of the proposal and i think i think uh Dave kind of said it earlier about the about one of them that you know we don't want to go into that process and talk about what we're going to shave off of that. I think there that that the proposals are there because those pieces are are important as a whole. Um, but but you know uh, there are for those for the for the three the pickleball for tennis courts and softball. I think there are pieces in there that are attached to others. But in terms of the the seven hundred fifty thousand for war, that match process makes it stand out from the others. So you think that the seven hundred fifty thousand is is the number that is required to re meet the match, and that if CPA provides less, then the town would have to make up the difference. 
that's I, that's my understanding, but I, I don't. Um, yeah. Well, there's certainly multiply, right? So, I mean, if that can raise, like, the more we put towards this, the larger the multiplier benefit is what I was hearing. And then I, I think actually, Dave, you were about to speak, so I should probably stop. I think these are good questions. I think we should probably take them back to Amy and DPW and and hopefully you'll have another discussion of these. I will uh, it, say it, it will I, come up in the CPI commission, yes. Oh yeah, no question. I, I will say this. I don't I would be very surprised if you can build the bathhouse for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh. Well, I, this was to just that give it make an enough of a local contribution to get the match. Right, but I'm just saying when you look at the total dollars to do the bathhouse and the area around the War Memorial Pool, you know, I think you're you're a couple million dollars into this and hopefully we can get most of it from the state and federal government. But I'm just saying I don't think the 750 gets you much beyond the building. I I, I could be wrong on that, but um I don't we're, think looking, we're, we're looking at downtown bathrooms right now. <clears throat> And downtown bathrooms, we're, we're going to put in a bathroom at Kendrick Park. And mm -hmm. the numbers range probably from 250,000 and up for downtown bathrooms. So this includes showering, ADA, all of the. So, you know, I'm, I'm just saying the 750 might get you the building, but it might not. So. Um, so I'm putting that in perspective. You, you're, you're trying to get the building, but everything around it, and this is what the we're going to show the state and federal government what our match is. We we can use the design money and then this construction money to match federal dollars and state dollars. That's our goal. And we did the same thing with the North Common. We put in, I think we put in about eight hundred thousand for the North Common, and then we got a Land and Water Conservation Fund grant for another eight fifty or eight sixty, and that's how we got up to about one point seven million for the North Common. Does that help or hurt? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, okay. All right. Um, again, so this is our last opportunity to give that feedback going into those presentations. Any other thoughts, members, relative to the negotiable areas that, that Matt should be aware of, or you'd like him to hear from you? Okay, I mean, I, yeah, I just had the ones I mentioned before, Sanjay's on maintenance, um, Jonas is on, you know, the, the backstop, so both related to softball. Um, and then, yeah, just, clarity on on what how that 750 plays into the match and so forth which it sounds like uh dave and ray are gonna have amy working on as well so okay well okay. i think i think that covers us for this matt unless you have any other thing you want to ask us no that's good thank you so awesome. i'll stop screen, i'll stop the sharing okay we are we're at 8 20 right now which is certainly longer than i'd like i'm wondering ray the, the pickleball piece, is that something we need to, have to, okay. Then the Cherry Hill finances, I know we did, um, we we talked about maybe having interest in uh, like a subcommittee that could help provide you some guidance. So maybe you could give us um, an update on that. And then also, by the way, you're on mute. Um, maybe you can give us an update on that. And then let's, let's see if there's some immediate next steps. Um, Dave, I don't know if you were planning on staying for Cherry Hill Finances, but um, that uh, leave that up to you. And if you don't uh, stay, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I can make this really uh, really brief. Trying to respect your time here. I know we've been over. I, first of all, I, we're going to get to it at the end. But I really appreciate Gene and Andrew taking taking the uh, reins here of this meeting. I think it fits for the for the commission. It's your meeting. I, I love to be a part of it, but I think this is good. I apologize to them for giving them the reins right when we're talking about CPA, because it almost seems like they, <laughs> we're throwing everything at them, because that's the time for new members. This is the time when when the uh, commission, mem commission meetings sort of get longer and maybe more involved. Uh, uh, but as we get into this piece here, um, 
uh, I can say that I've spoken at length with Paul Bachelman. I've spoken at length with Dave about about the uh, you know what I see as being a financial uh, crisis at Cherry Hill, are being overspent, are being are are trying to find inside of our budget the ability to to uh, uh, act, act responsibly to to act within a given budget, but trying to reconcile that budget with what's in front of us. In my conversations over the last couple of weeks with Town Hall, um, one of the things that that we've really, uh, I, th I think has become a major point for us is that we are going to put together a working group to deal with the same issues I, that I mentioned to you all. Um, when I say that the, the goals here need to be threefold, we're looking at, at uh, finding out what the youth need and the future of Cherry Hill is in the community. That's a really important piece of this. We can tie that into a working group, a, a working group that's put together by the town and in, it involves uh, a representative or two from this commission that are interested in being involved in that, but, but to basically get a sense for what the youth need and the future of the course is. To look at uh, how we can secure the funding that that I've outlined for you that that the the course needs in order to uh, in order to, to be successful the, the the funding that isn't currently present in the budget the current the funding that that's really important for for being able to raise revenue being able to limit uh, limit expenses and certainly even being able to protect the uh, the, the the asset and the revenue that we create there to those are those are the things that are built into those those sort of ads, those wish ads that, that I've mentioned to you. And then the third thing I said was coming up with a, a you know the, the best available options for what to do if we can't find those resources. If the, those if those resources don't come to us through the budget process, is it possible for us to secure that elsewhere in, in other means or even to find somebody else to find who and what is best capable of managing that those awesome resources there. The, and so the numbers I shared with you, I can certainly answer any questions that, that you may have about that. Uh, I can answer that now, or you can submit those to me individually. I think it might work if you guys want to submit those questions to me individually. I'd be happy to answer any questions here now, especially with Dave still here. Um, but uh, you know, the, the, to, to give you a sense of what that sheet is telling us is we make more money than I think is the is the understanding there. The, uh, you know, there's much it's much more complex than just looking at how much money uh, we take in, uh, but that money is not insignificant in the grander scheme. When I gave you the adjusted numbers uh, uh, to to run us to two hundred ninety thousand, we're at two hundred ninety thousand dollars plus as we just closed the course last weekend. And so that's not insignificant, and it's and it's a significant amount more than what we're spending. We are spending more than we're supposed to spend, which is a crisis for us. We're spending more than we are asked to spend, more than we are budgeted to spend, and it's not a question of we. You know, some of I think we could be making more money, honestly, if we if we were able to spend more freely but we can't spend more freely because we are already over over budget and so being creative is built into our management of that course right now how creative are we how creative should we be that's what we can do for the for the for this for the course of the year we are going to be putting together that working group. I know that we had some folks that that said that they would be interested in participating and looking at that. I would be happy to advance your names uh, where, as as we get. I, I'd like to get started yesterday, but I'd like to be able to get myself, uh, you know, uh, putting together a a working group from the community, including the commission, including rec staff, including including uh, community stakeholders, including people from the golf and from the golf world and the golf community. Uh, I would like to be able to use people as as comparisons to try and come up with a plan for this town as to what we do with with a asset and resource that we haven't we haven't found. Uh, we haven't found out how to to successfully uh, uh, 
support it at to this point and so the next step may be it's like a fork in the road it may be to go this way it may be to go that way but we want to try and put together a group town hall is committed to to put us in that situation so so the in, town hall supports it you want to do are, are you the one who's setting up the that committee ray that's what that's what we have to talk about where that is technically i believe paul is the one who okay. town manager is the one who signs off on all working groups who puts those together i certainly have some say dave has some say but when we put together those working groups i think that we're the ones uh, you know we want to put together a team that is thoughtful and 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 involved and it's that's in, invested in where it's going but also is objective enough to be able to to uh, uh create an honest picture makes sense uh matt you want to jump in so i just trying to understand what what you're trying to who you're trying to convince here is the problem that uh the budget is not reflective of reality so do you need to get the budget adjusted do you need town council to so you're needing to make a presentation to town council to change the budget or is 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 are you trying to do something else other than so that? so what i well, what i'm looking at is the the needs for cherry hill will be tied into my my uh tied into our budget process the budget process i, I will present those needs to the to the to the finance department when we start talking about and to the town manager when we start talking about what our budget should be for the next cycle that's a that is a really important part of our presenting our future here um it's not to prove to you you all don't i i could i could share that 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 same argument with you every week from now until the end of time and it still becomes me getting you all to say yeah i hear you i understand this is a hard business you're running this is everything you're doing there i think that i'm sharing with you all because if the reason why uh, my my goal in trying to share with you all what those needs are is is basically framing the question when we uh, when we go through this process, and if the if the if the if the budget process doesn't yield those needs, then then oh, you know, uh, essentially I'm looking at my commission to say, can you help find how to get that, or find who can who can operate that in a different way? The the, the town is the uh, 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 town hall is going to put together that working group to do what I think I'm, I was, I was trying to stir the, the commission into seeing what our challenges are with Cherry Hill. And so representatives from the commission uh, can help me by, by being, being a part of and voicing the concerns of Cherry Hill that you may see in that working group. And that's now where I pivot and say the commission can help me. Yeah, so that you're saying the town is putting together a working group to either propose a, a better budget or propose a different solution. I could, it's it's two separate things. I will be working through the budget oh. process. The working group okay. will be looking at the long term. We'll be looking at at this year, next year, and years in the future, and seeing what it is that we can do. We won't. It, okay. it, it doesn't necessarily work. The two of them are not the same thing. I think there is a budget process that we that we. That we work through but in terms of trying to see if there is a way to get I, like i'm not overly optimistic that all of my my requested needs the things that i've acknowledged as needs come to us in the in the budget process i didn't present that as saying that this is what we have to have or else i present that to you all as saying that these are the things that if cherry hill is going to be successful these are the things that i see as being as being important, necessary, vital parts of operating, uh, of taking pressure off of our our major budget crises, of of protecting our our resources, of 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 looking at in both in terms of equipment and in terms of our revenue, in terms of protecting what we have, those are things that I've acknowledged as being needs for us. Uh, uh, if we don't get that through the budget process, which is not the only way to do that, but if we don't get that through the budget process, it's an elliptical, what happens next? 
that working group is the one that that I I think I think the 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 way I see that that push that working group is the one where I should be putting most of that energy into trying to say this is what we need. Do you in your in in your research do you see this and how can we get there? All right, Dave. Let's uh, let's see your hand up. Please jump in. Sure. So I think I'm going to say very similar to what Ray said, but maybe in a in a different way. So I think you know I've been around the the Cherry Hill table for a long time, um, and and the course. And so first off, I think Ray outlined this well. There's the budget process, which will begin in a couple of weeks for us for for the next fiscal year, starting July 1, 24. Um, I don't see anything, it's not like anyone is talking about stopping golf operations in 2024 or, or anything like that. Ray needs to work through with his staff, with our finance folks, what the needs are. His job is to, part of his job is to outline what are the needs of the course are. Those, you know, in 2023, 24 have become crystal clear. And um, and there's there's a price tag for those, both on the operating side, but also on the capital side. So notwithstanding that, the town manager has asked us to work together, Ray and myself, with, with input from you and other community members on this working group. And again, Paul will certainly take in names through Ray, myself perhaps, um, and, and, and appoint a working group. But I wanna be honest, so, so Ray came in just a couple of years ago. Cherry Hill has been running a deficit off and on for 20 to 30 years. This is not a new issue, but it is a very real issue. These are not, these are significant numbers. These are, you know, 35, 45, $50,000 a year. That's a significant operating deficit. It's not every other year. It's not every third year. It's almost every year. It is very hard for the, the, the town of Amherst or any municipality to run a nine hole golf course and break even, let alone have a, have a, have a surplus. That's not even including capital, which doesn't even really show on, 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 on Ray's budget. So the working group, their job is very broad, is to look at the current state of the course, the operating, the capital, the capital needs over time. How is everything looking out there? Irrigation, pumping, uh, 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 carts, clubhouse, all the things that uh, recreation has done to enhance the facility, working with Nordic skiing, working with uh, events like Winterfest, all of that. And what does the whole package look like? And as Ray said, to outline to the town manager some options, continue as we're going. Well, what will that take from a capital standpoint and an operating <clears throat> standpoint? To look at other options. Um, one that we've explored in the past, I think we've even done it, um, is the possibility of putting out an RFP to see if an outside entity would operate Cherry Hill Golf Course. That's not to say we would lose the asset. It's not to say that some of the other things that happen there, like Winterfest or Nordic skiing, couldn't happen. But perhaps there's a company out there that would like to run the golf operation and do it more efficiently and profitably than we could and still offer golf at this wonderful nine hole golf course. Ray's predecessor, Barbara Bills, who some of you know and probably worked with, um, did a wonderful job, an amazing job um, with, with Cherry Hill and the golf operations there. And even Barbara at the end of the day, who was both a golfer and did a lot to bring more women into that uh, golf course and, and women's tournaments and really broadened the, the membership, had trouble at the end of the fiscal year um, making the numbers work. And that was with very minimal capital investments. So I think this working group can take a look at partnerships, create creative options, um, and creative revenue streams, as I think Ray alluded to. And that's their, their purview. And we'll, and we'll come up with a charge for the group. Um, so I, perhaps that kind of rounds out what the town manager is, is thinking about. Um, we're, you know, honestly, the next 
10 to 15 years of budget cycles in the town of Amherst with our four capital projects, two of which have already launched, are going to be very challenging. We are not going to be doing significant new initiatives. We are doing four capital projects. We also form the CREST program and the DEI departments. And so operating budgets are not going to get much bigger. They're going to get tighter in the next five to 10 years. So we have to be more creative as staff and working with you. So that's kind of my summary of, of what we've, you know, we've, we've been talking about Ray and myself with the town manager and happy to take questions if you have any. Thank you, Dave and Ray. Um, let's go to questions and then just, uh, yeah, I mean, if we can sort of keep them brief, uh, that would be great. Jonas, why don't you get started? Yeah, I wonder, have, have you thought of a partnership with UMass golf team? I, I look, it looks like they currently do it at, they golf at Hickory Ridge. Hickory Ridge is being closed, right? Uh, they golf at, I think they golf at Amherst Golf Course or Grump and Fox. I'm not sure Ray may know. It looks like it's saying they're at Hickory Ridge. Well, they're, they're definitely not at Hickory Ridge. They're, they're definitely not at Hickory Ridge. <laughs> no, it's, 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 Hickory Ridge isn't even in operation anymore. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, website then. it might be Sorry. a Crump and Fox. I'm not sure. <laughs> and they need to update their website. But, but yes, that would all be part of the purview of, of this group is looking at partnerships broad, broadly. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Jonas. Uh, Sanjay? Uh, I'm, I'm interested in participating, I think, in the working group, as I've mentioned before. I might, one of the things I will be interested in is that Cherry Hill is discussed, treated, and evaluated in a way that is similar to the way that other recreation other recreational facilities in town are talked about, discussed, and evaluated. Excellent. Um, all right, I think we've got some good presentations. Sanjay's expressed interest. Chris, I know in the past you have as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still in on that. All right. I'm, I'm still in. I'm just I'm just processing everything Dave and um Ray yeah. said. I didn't so. I didn't mean to volunteer you yet. I was just um but in terms of procedurally, so Paul will be putting this commission together. You all take names forward. Um I you know, this actually sounds more formal of a process than I expected. I mean, um any reason to expect that we couldn't get, you know, at least one or hopefully two if Chris and Sanjay both want to be there on the board and then I guess in another procedural question is do we just sort of insist that there's rec commission parts you know like that that a rec commission member needs to be part of the commission uh part of this task force I would I would certainly uh I would certainly believe that the rec commission has to be involved in the working group um I would I would argue that 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 it's essential for you all to be involved in it. Uh, if we had two people that were looking to rep be represented, that would not be a problem for me either. Um, uh, we don't want to involve, uh, if it's redundant, then it'd be one thing, but I don't think that having two people in this example would be a problem for us to, to, uh, uh, to involve in that group. I can check with, with the uh, town manager on that. Okay. All right. No, that sounds good. So Sanjay and Chris expressed interest. And then uh, I should have asked, was there anyone else who uh, had an interest in participating? All right. Um, okay. I guess so Ray and Dave, then you got two names from us. Um, folks very interested and committed to helping out here. Um, any idea when you would anticipate this task force being set up it will Just, be it's uh, it's a matter of priority for me so i'd say within the next month all right so you've, got, you've got all my information you know how to get hold of me thank you chris yeah thanks uh chris and sanjay for stepping up all right um i think that would wrap up that order of business then Unless Ray, Dave, anything else to add? Awesome. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, thank you. We're going to push pickleball off until next month. Um, and then, you know, basically same for meeting cadence. We'll look at this kind of this first Monday. I have another commitment on Mondays, but I'm hoping to keep it either, you know, very close to the beginning 
Uh, Gene and I, Gene Ray and I talked about that a little bit as well, but we'll get a, a date out for you right now. That would be December 4th. Um, uh, and then if, if there's no other items, Ray or Gene, that you want to bring forward? I was just going to ask, Ray, do you have any updates on uh, meeting in person, a hybrid format? I, you just said that and Dave snuck away. I was going to ask oh. him before. <laughs> before he left. Uh, uh, I haven't heard specifically about that hybrid. Um, I can yeah. I can get back to you. I can right. That'd be great. let you know on that. Okay. Thanks, Gene. Mm -hmm. All right. On that note, um, thanks everybody for the extra little bit of time. Um, <laughs> we won't go this long moving long. forward. <laughs> yeah. But I uh, appreciate all the questions and, and uh, just being, um, active participants is great yeah. uh Thank enjoy you. the rest of what's left of your evening um we'll see you in about a month thank you very good night thank you everybody good to see you good to see you